Activity Center and Youth Cheer and Football Day. This afternoon's heart matchup features the Benedictine College Ravens and your Mid America Nazarene University Pioneers. MNU, the heart of America Athletic Conference, and the NAIA would like to welcome you to today's contest and ask that you join us in supporting character driven intercollegiate athletics. Help us create a positive, competitive environment by showing respect for today's student athletes, officials, and spectators. MNU is committed to the NAIA Champions of Character program and asks for your help to create a positive, competitive environment. Thank you for your cooperation. Today, we welcome Benedictine College. The Ravens enter today's contest with a 9-1 record, ranked 6th in the NAIA. Your MNU Pioneers step on the field with a 7-3 record. Officials for today's games are referee Nathan Chitwood, umpire Bruce Whitesides, linesman Fred Lindsay, line judge Patrick Clare, center judge Alexander Ferrara, back judge Larry Backus, side judge Dax Barker, and field judge Dallas Bryant. Football fans, we are 20 minutes away from kickoff. Are you ready? Let's introduce our senior cheerleaders. Our first senior is Cassidy Anderson. Cassidy is a flyer from Linden, Kansas. She's a nursing major with a minor in psychology and a four-year team member. Today, she is escorted by her mother, Paula Anderson. After graduation, she plans to stay in Kansas City and work as a NICU or labor and, labor and delivery nurse. Next, we have Faith Dimiturko. Faith is a side base from Shawnee, Kansas. She's an early education major and a third year team member. Today, she is escorted by her parents, Mike and Amy Dimiturko. After graduation, she plans to teach in inner cities while getting her master's in psychology. Next, we have Reagan and Riley Martin. Reagan is a flyer and Riley is a base and back spot. From Linden, Kansas, Reagan is a biology major with a minor in chemistry and Riley is a psychology major with a minor in sociology. Both were on the team for four years. Today, they're being escorted by their parents, Ryan and Teresa Martin. After graduation, Reagan plans to attend medical school to become a physician. Riley plans to further her education by pursuing a master's degree in speech and language pathology. Next, we have Abigail McGinley. Abigail is a main base from Topeka, Kansas. Abigail is a nursing major and a four-year team member. Today, she is escorted by her parents, Shane and Carrie McGinley. After graduation, she plans to stay in the Kansas City area and work as a nurse 
in the neonatal ICU. Next, we have Anaya Un. Anaya is a maid base from Olathe, Kansas. Anaya is a nursing major with a minor in psychology and a four-year team member. Today, she is escorted by her parents, Michelle and Roselle Nunn III. After graduation, she plans on becoming a labor and delivery nurse and furthering her education in nursing. Next, we have Kaylee Perry. Kaylee is a side base from Macon, Missouri. Kaylee is a nursing major with a minor in intercultural studies and a four-year team member. Today, she is escorted by her parents, Kelly and Cindy Perry. After graduation, she plans on getting married in May and working as a NICU nurse in Kansas City. Next, we have Haley West. Haley is a side base from Paola, Kansas. Haley is a nursing major and a third year team member. Today, she is escorted by her parents, Scott and Amanda West. After graduation, she plans on getting married and becoming a nurse. After graduation, she also plans on getting married in June and starting her job as a labor and delivery nurse at Overland Park Regional. And finally, we have Belle Woolsey. Belle is the team manager from Springfield, Illinois. Belle is an elementary education major and a first year team member. Today, she is escorted by her father, Tyler Woolsey. After graduation, she plans on being a teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, your senior cheerleaders. Football players. Our first senior is number zero, Tyler Musinus. Tyler is a tight end from Tucson, Arizona, majoring in business administration. Business administration. Tyler is accompanied by his mother, Melissa Macon. After graduating, Tyler will continue to enjoy long walks on the beach and continue his education. Number two, Troy Hall. Troy is a safety from Victorville, California, majoring in business administration with an entrepreneurship minor. Troy is accompanied by his parents, Troy and Alyssa Hall. Troy will be looking to play football professionally after graduating. Number four, Falasa Aitu Punulal Palete Tofi. Falasa is a linebacker from San Francisco, California, majoring in kinesiology. 
Falasa is accompanied by his parents, Malika and Erdi. Falasa plans on becoming a personal trainer after he graduates. Number five, Bryson Lede. Bryson is a defensive back from St. Martinsville, Louisiana, majoring in mathematics. Bryson is accompanied by his parents, Danielle Mitchell and Arthur Lede. After graduating, Bryson will pursue a career working for a space agency working on satellites. Number 10, Trey Matt Pledger. Trey Matt is a defensive back from Georgia by way of Lansing, Kansas, majoring in kinesiology. Trey Matt is accompanied by his mother, Brandy, and his uncle, Jeff Grip. After graduating, Trey Matt plans on becoming a strength and conditioning coach with goals to impact athletes of all ages in a positive way. He also plans to eventually own his own gym. Number 16, Blake Atkins. Blake is a quarterback from Pleasant Hill, Missouri, majoring in sports management with a minor in coaching. He is accompanied by his parents, Harry and Tina Atkins. Blake will be looking to get a job in the sports industry after he graduates. Number 18, Brian Cox. Brian is a tight end from Independence, Missouri, majoring in marketing. Brian is accompanied by his parents, Scott Cox and Elizabeth Wing. Brian will be working towards getting a job in sports marketing world after he graduates. Number 33, Shaden Siegfried. Shaden is a linebacker from Highland Ranch, Colorado, majoring in ministry. Shaden is accompanied by his parents, Sean and Sherry Siegfried. Shaden plans to get a full-time position at Kansas City First Church of the Nazarene. Number 40, Tanner Sample. Tanner is an outside linebacker from Olathe, Kansas, majoring in kinesiology, pre-physical therapy. Tanner is accompanied by his, parents, by his parents, Jennifer and Tobin Sample. After graduating, T Tanner will be gr attending graduate school for his physical therapy doctorate. Number 41 is Jacob Zubieta. Jacob is a defensive back from Fort Scott, Kansas, majoring in marketing with a business administration minor. Jacob is accompanied by his, apparent, by his parents, Lori Lewis and Jason Zebieta. After graduating, Jacob wants to get a job in the world of marketing. Number 50, Zyri White. Zyri is a defensive lineman from Topeka, Kansas, majoring in sports management. Zyri is accompanied by his mother, Sherry, and his brother, Zaiwan. After graduating, Zyri plans on becoming a sports agent. Number 65, Andre Brown. Andre is an offensive lineman from Annapolis, Maryland, majoring in sports management with a minor in coaching. Andre is accompanied by his girlfriend, Alexis Young. Andre plans on working with the Baltimore Ravens Equipment Management Department upon graduation. Number 88 is Brock West. Brock is a wide receiver from Lenexa, Kansas, majoring in business administration. Brock is accompanied by his parents, Brayden and Tyler West. Brock plans on getting his MBA after graduating and getting a full-time job. And then finally, Sayera Juarez. Sayera is a student assistant from Emporia, Kansas, majoring in biology, pre-med. Sayera is accompanied by her roommate, Carly Lindemeyer, and best friend, Greenlee Kuzart. After graduating, Sayera plans to attend medical school. Ladies and gentlemen, your MNU football seniors. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please rise? Gentlemen, remove your caps.
for an opening invocation. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for the bonds of friendship on both sides of the football. Thank you for the skills and ability you have given these athletes, coaches, and officials. We pray for an injury-free game and a safe return trip for Benedictine. It's your, in your heavenly name we pray, amen. Now please remain standing as we honor America through the singing of our national anthem this afternoon by Abigail Howard, a senior music theater major from Columbia, Illinois. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red flare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh saved us that star spangled Good afternoon, everyone. Make sure we're here and we're going. Looks like we're in. Welcome to the Olathe District Activity Center. We are ready for kickoff between the visiting Benedine, Benedine University, I'm sorry, wow, Benedine College Raven. Boy, I'm having a great start, aren't I? And your Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers. We're you ready for the coin toss. It is a chilly, chilly day here in Olathe. Game time temperature is only going to be right at freezing, 32 degrees, very stiff wind out of the north, mix of sun and clouds, mostly clouds. So it is every bit of football weather for this game. It's going to be interesting watching the players try and stay loose out there. Players' rosters for today's game can be found by scanning the QR code on the video board. Benedictine, they come into today. They are 9-1 and one on this season, ranked number 6. Pioneers a little bit behind them at 7-3. and three. Undefeated at home, trying to keep that going here in the last home game, last game for both squads of the season. This is going to do it for the 2022 year, if you can believe that. And now coin toss has been completed. The officials about to let us know who won. So the Pioneers won the toss. They elected to defer. So Benedictine will receive. The Pioneers are going to start with the wind at their back. Pioneers are in their all red uniforms today. Red tops, red bottoms, silver helmets. And over for Benedictine, black helmets, white tops, and white pants. Again, it is chilly out there, so fans all bundled up. It's going to be rather quiet as people clapping through their gloves. Players doing everything they can to stay loose. In Benedictine, trying to put the Final note on what is a very impressive season. Again, nine and one overall. Pioneers at home are still the heavy underdogs in this fight. Senior day here in Olathe, so all the Pioneer seniors honored before the game. Wish them well and wherever life takes them. for Benedictine, Jaden Jones. As you watch on the camera, you'll see the visiting stands. That's uh, on the back side of the camera there. Benedictine traveling well, filling up nicely. 
their stands, so they're going to have a lot of support here on this technically away game. Although these schools not very far apart. Both Kansas squads. Like I said, the, the wind is pretty stiff today out of the north, so it's cold. Pioneers are going to have it at their back. It's a little quick ship shot, keeping it away from their return man, taken by one of the up men. He's up to the 35, able to get through at the 40. Now knocked down at the 45-yard line, so Benedictine is going to start with excellent field position for the Ravens' first possession of the ball game. I've not seen Benedictine play yet this year. I'm told they are a very run-heavy team. At least that's what they did last year against the Pioneers. They just ran the ball. And Pioneers this year has had pretty good run defense. So going to be a battle of wills on the front line between the offensive line of Benedictine and the defensive front four for the Pioneers. Again, ball officially placed at the 46-yard line. It's going to be a play-action pass right out of the gate. Dialing long distance, going down the left side. Has a step, has a man. Oh, just out of reach. This is Kettle, Garrett Kettle, quarterback, senior quarterback for Benedictine. So imagine playing his last game, had a man down the left side who was able to get past coverage, but they weren't able to connect the pass. Just, I don't know, I think it was a hair out of reach. Looked like the wind kind of carried it to the receiver's inside, to his right side. He was not able to catch that in stride. So second and 10. The Ravens coming out firing on their first play. Now they're going to shift. It's going to be empty backfield. Quarterback alone, drops back, looking right, throws over the middle, has a man up the seam, and that's going to be enough for the first down by the tight end. And, boy, he comes up gimpy after the play, and Zimmerman's going to limp off the field. There were two Ravens right there in the same area, so somebody ran an incomplete or an incorrect pattern. Worked out well, though. First down, ball at the 30-yard line. So Benedictine throwing into the wind. Was able to come up with that first down catch to their tight end. Now Kettle's going to hand it off, running back working to his left. Pioneer's defense is there, and down he goes. This is Todd with the carry. He's knocked down by Hall. Oh, I'm sorry, they're going to say it was Jones on the carry. Are we sure about that? No, nope. I think I was right. So it looks like Benedictine has a lot of repeating numbers, for both offense and defense. I apologize if my roster is not correct, but I have Deshaun Todd as number one on offense. So now going with a bit of a hard count. Now they're going to hand it off again. Trying to go left side. Able to hurdle the defender. Now pushed out of bounds. Not going to be enough for the first down. This is Rashawn Mills with the carry. They're going to give him seven on that. It's going to bring up third and two. Again, the Ravens right now finding success on the edge. Not going in between guard and tackle. They're going outside the tackles. Now they're going to line up with three wide receivers to the right side, one to the left. Running back remains in the backfield with the quarterback. They do like motion, it would appear. See if they send anyone in motion before the play. Nope. Quarterback's just going to keep it. Design keeper trying to get two. He's going to be hit right at the sticks since it's all going to come down to placement. Initial indication is going to be that he's a yard short. Yep, gain of one, fourth and one. And... A little confusion by Benedictine. They're changing personnel, but it does look like they're going to go for it on this fourth and one. So fourth and one on the 21-yard line. Again, this is a really short one. Benedictine just kind of has to fall forward, and they're going to have it. But they're going to do this in the shotgun. They're going to send two men in motion to the right side. Pioneer's defense looks a little out of sorts. They hand it off. If they knock him down, that's down. That's a turnover. Turnover on downs by the Pioneers. Troy Hall. On senior day, coming up big, and is able to knock him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, and that's a turnover on downs. Ball back to the Pioneers. So well done for the Pioneers. Now trotting out is the offense. Blake Atkins going to start this game under center. Atkins had himself a heck of a game last week. Throwing for, I believe it was six total touchdowns, five or six total touchdowns, one of the two. And six it was, yeah, and he was uh, Conference Offensive Player of the Week. So he gets the start today, getting handed off to Cherry, going right up the middle. 
And he is swallowed up by the defensive line of the Ravens. Sean Cherry, gain of one and a half on the play. Pioneers quickly getting set again. Going to see if they can catch a Raven sleeping. You're seeing a man in motion. Going from the bottom of your screen to the top. Circles back around, now heading towards the bottom. They're going to hand this off to Cherry again. Cherry trying to cut inside. Nope. Ravens defense having none of that nonsense. And he's going to be knocked down at the original line of scrimmage. Going to bring up a third and ten. Sean Cherry on the carry. No gain on the play. Brought down by Mydell Law. Third down for Indiana. Pioneers again going no huddle. Wide receivers with their hands in the air, though. They do not look like they know exactly what they're doing. Here we go. Atkins. Play action pass. Drops back. Looking, looking. In trouble. Throws it. Has a man. Has Tannis, of course. Tannis not able to get to the first down marker. He's going to be short. Imagine with the wind at their back, this is probably going to bring in the punt unit for the Pioneers. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This was enough for the first down. Boy, he just got there then. Okay. I'll take it. Pioneers again quickly to the line. They had some success last week with this quick pace. Now this play is blown dead. I wonder if the Pioneers had someone lined up offsides. Okay, no, it's going to be a false start on the offensive line. Looks like there was a lot going wrong in that play. He did barely, okay, thank you. <laughs> Producer confirmed he barely made it across for that first down. So Constantino has called for the false start. Going to move the Pioneers back, first and 15. They're going to hand it off up the middle. No, play action pass again. They go outside, has man on the sideline. I believe this is St. Louis. He's able to get away from his defender, cuts it inside, and he's finally knocked down near midfield. But it's St. Louis making something out of nothing on that. I thought that was just going to be a very minimal gain. He gets away from the defender on him, cuts inside, moves it up the field. Pioneer first down. They are near midfield. So a good first drive of the game forming so far for the Pioneers. Atkins has three to his right, no one to his left. They're going to give it to Cherry. Cherry trying to get the edge, cuts inside. Oh, he's about to get halfway there. Four or five yard gain on that first down carry. On the carry, gain of three yards. Brought down by Javi Bloomquist. Bloomquist credited with the tackle. Menifee coming in for the Pioneers. Pioneers, their first trip inside of Raven territory. Ball on the 49 yard line. Atkins still has his running back next to him to the right. Three wide receivers right. Another play action pass. Over the middle to Tannis. Tannis, nice slant inside. It's a foot race to the end zone. Tannis, 10, 5, touchdown, Pioneers. 49-yard completion. Atkins to Tannis. Tannis with a Pioneer touchdown. Boy, and stop me if you've heard that before. The school record holder for touchdown receptions puts in yet another one. You can watch on your screen. You can see the replay there of Tannis. Thought they might get him right there, but nope. Able to just skip on in. I do see someone in the YouTube chat room asking if they can see. I'll check with my producer, make sure our YouTube feed is up and good looking. Get in the affirmative. So if anyone's having trouble seeing this, let us know. With 10, 13 remaining in the first quarter, YouTube is always a fickle creature. They kind of do what they want sometimes, but... If there's anything we can do to solve the problem, we sure will. So with that, in the early stages of the first quarter, we still have 10-13 remaining in the first, 7-0 Pioneers. As their first offensive drive of the day leads to a touchdown after stopping the Ravens on fourth down and creating a turnover on downs. Check out your screen. You can see more replays. That's a good angle. Our little field cam there on the Tannis touchdown. I like it. Oh, here's another one from behind the end zone. Well, these cameramen are everywhere today. Well, as I said at the top of the broadcast, they're miserable too because it's cold. All right, Pioneers lining up. 
That little chip shot. And fielded about the 22. Pioneers trying to corral the return man. They finally knock him down. Ball's going to be down around the 37-yard line. Little extracurricular activities after that. The official's quick to break all that nonsense up. Martinez gets the stop. Again on that last, the last Pioneer defensive stand, in it on that fourth down, and it was Hall who was able to knock him down, not let him have the first down. Looks like Hall's got some family watching here. Got the cousin. Welcome to Antoine Brandon, cousin of Hall. Now here's a run right up the gut. Pioneer defense able to knock it down. Looks like about a three-yard gain. Go. Oh, we got we got mom watching. Him and you, mom watching. Hey, welcome. Where are you watching from? Hopefully, somewhere warm, maybe tropical. Empty backfield for the Ravens. Now they're going to send man in motion. Joins the quarterback in the backfield, and they're going to hand off to him right side. A lot of room there. Pioneers trying to close. Hall in pursuit, and Hall able to finally push him out of downs. It's out of bounds. I'm sorry. That's going to be a first down run. This is Victor Terry. The third. Nope. Nope, nope, I need the running back one. There we go. This is Dalton Witherspoon. Witherspoon with that carry. First down. First down and 10, Benedictus. There we go. We got Antoine, the cousin, and sister watching. Hello, everyone. It's a ball right at midfield. Ravens, ooh, fumble on the snap. Pioneers can't get their quarterback, picks it up. He still has time. Now being pursued, gets out of the pocket. Foot race, he's going to have a few positive yards. Boy, that worked out well for the Ravens as Kettle dropped the ball on the snap. Even had trouble picking it up, but the Pioneer defense couldn't get to him. He dropped back. He looked for a pass for just a moment and then decided to tuck and run. So the Ravens in Pioneer territory. Ball on the 46. Second and five. Ravens send a man in motion. All the receivers are to the right of the quarterback. Still has a man in the backfield with them. They're going to turn, hand it off, just a stretch play right. And knocked down by the Pioneer defense. This is going to be short of the first down by a yard. And still getting a little chippy. <laughs> Pioneers players ripping each other out of the out of the scrum, out of the pile. Nothing silly. The Pioneers definitely gotten bit a few times with some untimely penalty calls. So cooler heads prevailing. In third and one. Empty backfield at the moment. We'll see if anyone goes in motion. Now they do. Looked like Witherspoon comes and joins the quarterback. They're going to give it to him. He's working left. Has the first down. Has more. Slippery runner now drugged down by the Pioneers defense. This was Pledger able to come over and make the tackle. But definitely enough for the first down. This again by Dalton Witherspoon. Witherspoon, big back. Pioneers having trouble dragging him down. So this is what happened last year when the Pioneers played Benedictine. It was a great game, a shootout, both sides scoring a lot of points, but the Ravens were just able to run, run, run all over the Pioneer defense. That's what they do. They're going to send a man in motion. Pioneers trying to get him. He cuts up field. Going to be a good gain on this carry. This is the wide receiver, Gathright, who went in motion, took it from the quarterback as he was passing by. Able to get around the edge and create positive yardage. Second and eight. No, I'm sorry, second and two. Gain of eight. Last game of the season, and apparently I can't talk. I think I'd know what I was doing by now. Ravens offense, they don't huddle up, but they're also not in any hurry. This is not a fast-paced offense so far. And they're going to have a play-action pass now. Kettle drops back. Now hits it to his running back coming out of the backfield, able to turn up field. He's at the five, trying to barrel in the end zone. Spun down to the ground. Going to come down to placement. They're going to put him down at the one-yard line. So Overstreet, a game of 19. And this is first and goal from the one-yard line for the Ravens. 
If you're a Pioneer fan, this is where you hope maybe the cold weather conditions will make someone not hold on to the ball as well. Maybe you can force a fumble. Maybe the ball will slip out of his hands. It's cold. Somebody pour some water on it, quick. Make it a nice cube. First and goal, still shotgun formation. They're going to hand it off to the running back just right up the middle, and he's able to go in between guard and tackle. And that's going to be a touchdown for the Ravens. This was Rishon Mills with the carry. He comes up with six points. Now the extra point unit coming on for the Ravens. This is going to tie the game, pinning the extra point. That was a very businesslike drive for the Ravens. It's running it right down the field. Nick Completions when needed. Ooh, boy, the Pioneers were there. But, boy, missed the block. So the PAT is up and good, but, boy, it looked like a Pioneer was right there. Couldn't come up with that block. You know, it's dangerous because you can't run into the kicker. Don't do that. Bad, bad. So we're all tied up now with 6.06 .06 remaining in the first quarter, seven apiece. Here in this last game of the season for both squads, Pioneers and Ravens, both guaranteed to finish with pretty good records. Yeah, let's see that replay one more time. I want to see how close we got. There's the ball. Oh, boy. Right there. Just couldn't get a hand on it. It looked like it was Anthony Sal for the Pioneers who was right there on the ball. What do they say? It's a game of inches. So when I can see the YouTube channel, which I can today, which is lovely, I do like to play the game of where are you watching from? So go ahead and type in there. Let us know where you're watching from. I do see a Washington State. Here's a short kickoff fielded by the Pioneers. They're going to return right up the middle. Still moving, still moving. Now going to be knocked down. I'd say forward progress should put this right at the 30. They're going to move it to the 31. So, yeah, let me, let me know where you're at here in the uh, YouTube chat room. We have had people watching from all corners of the globe. So Atkins returns. The Pioneers had a great opening drive. Led to seven points. There we go. Victor, let's see, what have we got? Victorville, California, Atchison, Kansas. An Atchison person rooting for Benedictine. Who to funk? Ooh, pressure on the quarterback. Atkins gets it away down the sideline and underthrew his receiver. Atkins took a big hit on that play as he threw. Which is what caused that to be a little inaccurate. Pressure was coming from Benedictine. There we go. Fort Scott, Kansas in the house. Every time I see my buddy in Tulsa, we stop in Fort Scott and grab some food. Man in motion for the Pioneers. Atkins fumbles it, trying to get the ball back. It's knocked off the ball. Now an offensive lineman has to come back and get it. So the Pioneers are going to recover this fumble. At least that's what it appears like up here. But now they are back a mile. And it's going to bring up third and a whole lot of. There we go. Belton, Missouri in the house. And, yeah, the Pioneers are going to keep this. The Ravens were doing the best they could to sell the officials that they had the ball. But it never looked like they did. <laughs> so third and 20 coming up. I said it's a long way for the Pioneers. Three to the left of the quarterback. So he's looking left, looking left. Pressure coming. Throws it over the middle. Into double coverage. Nice catch right at the first down marker. This is going to come down to placement. And I think this is enough. They're going to move the chains. St. Louis with a highly contested catch right over the middle. Watch it right here. Atkins looking left. Comes back to the middle. Zoop. There it goes. And look, defenders all over him. And St. Louis is able to elevate and come up with that catch. There you go. California in the house. All right. Play action pass. Atkins dials long distance. Has a man. That's completed. Takes the hit, knocked to the ground, hold on to the ball. Isaiah Williams comes up with a 28-yarder, but this is all coming back. There is laundry on the turf and a holding call. No, an ineligible downfield. So an offensive lineman just meandered a little too far away from the line of scrimmage. 
And that big play for Williams all coming back. We have Sedalia, Missouri, Dewey, Oklahoma. That was a great catch by Williams. Those are the ones that just hurt. The ones that have to come backwards. So Tannis comes into the play, which means we're in scoring distance. <laughs> if Tannis is on the field, there's a chance. Lining up where he might catch a slant here. Atkins dropping back, looking, looking, going long again down the middle. Has Tannis just out of reach. Oh, so close. So close. Atkins trying to get it to Tannis right down the middle. He had to step on his defender. The pass was just a, a fingertip too long. Right here, you can see Tannis extends and uh, almost. Here we go. We've got some Andre Brown fans in the house from Maryland. Maryland, welcome. Atkins dropping back again over the middle. Has Williams. Williams, great move to make the defenders miss. He's got to punch it outside, and then he does. That's enough for the first down. The Pioneers are going to keep this drive alive and move the sticks. So Williams, great way to catch the ball and then get away from the defenders. Watch this replay here. Catches, spins, whoop, inside, and you miss. Gets it right to midfield and taken down. Atkins now sending Williams in motion. Williams behind the formation. They're going to hand it off up the middle. Ravens defense, not impressed. They take Finley and put him right down for a loss of one, actually. Now the ball's on the 50-yard line. St. Louis coming off the field for a moment. Going to get a breather. If you look on your screen, bottom of your screen is Tannis. And safety inching over in his direction. So they're going to double, double cover Tannis, and that they are. And Atkins goes to the sideline. There was nobody home there. Throws it into the Raven bench as pressure was coming in. So third and 11 coming up. Can the Pioneers try not to let this drive stall out right at midfield? One receiver to the right, two to the left for Atkins. Man in the backfield with him. Takes a snap. Looking left, looking left, comes back right. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run. It's going to be close. He slides down. That should be enough for the first. Ooh, they're going to spot the ball at the 40, which would leave the Pioneers a yard short. Hmm. To my untrained eye, he had it. Let's watch this replay here. Where does he give himself up? The 40 is the yard that matters. Oh, no, that's two yards short, Mr. Official, sir. Really don't think he gave up until about the 39, 38. The officials also do not care what I think. So it's fourth down, fourth and one. Ball places are out in place on the 40. They got to get to the 39. Lined up. They're going to go. They've got this and more. Finley able to break some tackles into the secondary and taken down right around the 25-yard line. So great job from Cameron Finley. He was able to just get it right outside the right tackle and get enough yards for that first down carry. So the drive continues on. Atkins has a man in motion. Again, behind Williams behind the formation. They fake it to Finley. They're going to pass. Looking, looking. Atkins in trouble. He's got to get out of there. Loses the ball. And I do believe this went right into the waiting hands of the Ravens. Indeed it did. Atkins was moving around trying to keep the play alive. And that ball just got knocked right out of his hand. And it went straight down right where a lineman fell on top of it. So a turnover by the Pioneers. And you can see it right here. Watch left, watch left. And right there, stripped. And he fell right on top of it. Same guy that stripped it fell on it. This was a, a, a turnover the Pioneers could ill afford in a game against such a high-powered team. Ooh, the coaches for the Pioneers up here in the box getting pretty animated down there. Yeah, design roll after the quarterback throws to the right on the run. 
This man goes out of bounds, and this is waved off. They're going to say incomplete. Nope, incomplete, Mr. PA announcer, sir. The officials called that incomplete, so it's going to be second and ten. There we go. He's got it corrected now. Kettle now. He's got three to his left, one at the top of your screen. Should be looking to see where they can get single coverage. Or they're going to run this. Yep, just run. Now we got a flag down. This is all going to come back. This is holding. And his pioneer was wrestled to the turf. So positive yards on that play, but going to come back. Here we go more love for Andre Brown from Annapolis, Maryland. And waiting for the official's call here. Wow, okay. Well, I sit corrected. This was a personal foul, hands to the face on the Pioneers. So that's a 15-yard penalty. Boy, they threw that flag right in the area of holding, right where we got wrestled down, but apparently the hands to the face happened first. So the penalty is added to the end of the run. So that run, which was a, a decent one, gets the ball all the way up to the 39-yard line. That is where the Ravens' offense now has first and 10. I'm sorry, 37 technically. Kittle all alone, drops back, had time, over the middle, has a man, completed pass. Hit at the 15, but not taken down until about the 7. As he was able to bounce off the first pass, or I'm sorry, the first tackle attempt, <laughs> tackler, defender, whatever you want to call it, and was finally drugged down. Trying to see who this was. I believe this was tight end Reed Levi. But that first down reception and more, setting the Ravens up for a first and goal from the nine. Kendall okay, now taking it. Ooh, fakes the toss. Now design keeper goes right up the middle and he's hit but able to stumble into the end zone for a Raven touchdown as it was just a quarterback keeper and Kettle able to weave his way into the end zone. This now gives the first lead of the afternoon to the Ravens. As they are up 13 to 7, extra point pending. And the extra point kick is up, and the kick is good. So that's going to make it now 14 to 7 in favor of the Ravens. They are able to score after the Blake Atkins fumble which proved to be a very costly turnover. Most turnovers are. And then you can see on the replay there, just Kettle pinballing around until he falls into the end zone. Just from up here, it looked like Kettle's a pretty good-sized quarterback. You see, he's listed here 6'4", 210. So, yeah, not the, not the wiry little running back. He's got some meat on him. That's how he's able to get through those defenders and fall into the end zone. So yeah, bad turnover by the Pioneers and a very costly penalty on the personal foul, hands to the face. Now the Ravens are going to be kicking off into this wind. Wind's still looking pretty stiff out there. You get on this very cold day, right at 32 degrees. Cloudy right now. Sun's been trying to poke through. Not that it's going to offer a whole lot of relief. Kick in the air. Boy, big hang time as it got up in the air. Into that wind. Fielded at the 15. St. Louis on the return. And he gets spun to the turf. And ball looks like it's going to be placed at the 23-yard line. That's where the Pioneer offense is looking to take over. Hoping for a better, better session than they had last time. <laughs> There's a replay. He went flying. Look at this. Whee! I heard somebody say there was a flag, but I don't see one on the field. Officials aren't calling anything, so maybe they picked it up if there was. Now the lead official is blowing this play dead. What does he want to talk about? Okay, he wanted the play clock reset. We have 123 remaining in the first quarter. Pioneers channeling 14 to 7. 
Atkins sends Williams in motion. Williams again going around the formation. He's the only one that does that. Now they're going to hit Williams out of the backfield. He catches it. Good catch by the freshman. Shuffles a little bit to the inside. Comes up with a few additional yards. I think he's probably going to get about six on this. Okay, they're going to give him seven. Seven on the first down play for the Pioneers. Second and three. Clock running with a minute left in the quarter. Now they're going to fake the sweep. They hand it off to Finley. Finley's got some room up the middle. Has a first down and a lot more as he takes us all the way up to about the 43, 44 yard line. So Cameron Finley has been able to find some room out there. Pioneers going with kind of the smaller running back. As Cherry is the, he's the big bopper that they come in for the hard yards. But Finley able to find room as the smaller speed back. Dare we call them some thunder and lightning. There's an old NFL reference for some of you. Now they can hit Finley out of the backfield. They fling it out to him. He's able to come up with about nine on first down. So that worked out well. Pioneers now in Raven territory. They were just in there by a yard, but that's a yard in Raven territory. Now St. Louis goes in motion, heading to the top of the screen, stops short, goes through the middle. Again, out of the backfield to Finley. Finley's got a lot of room. Defense closing. First down and a little bit more. Ball down at the 40-yard line. That's where Finley stripped up. So, again, the Pioneers keeping it moving. Nine-yard gain. All right, make a liar out of me, officials. It's eight yards. Pardon me. So that's going to do it for the first quarter. 14-7 to seven in favor of the visiting Ravens of Benedictine College. There we go. We've got some more people in here. New Brunsfield, Texas in the house. But it's warmer where you're at than where we are. I'll guarantee. Let's see. So for that, for that first quarter, the Pioneers with eight first downs and eight for Benedictine. So very even. Benedictine has 69 yards on the ground. This says the Pioneers only have 18. I don't think that's correct. Maybe we're still waiting for some stats to update. I think that'd be the case because there's no way the Pioneers are just at 18 yards on the ground. Nope, nope, nope. I wouldn't believe it. They've got a new stat system up here for me and having a good time trying to make heads and tails of this. Anyway, Finley, he's got 24 yards on the ground. Atkins with 10. Cherry just with 5. Atkins is 8 for 11 for 138 yards through the air and a touchdown. He had that 49-yard completion. And then we are already ready to go. With M and U. Giving it to Finley. Nope, they fake it to Finley. Now pass over the middle. Has Williams. Williams gets another defender to miss. Couldn't outrun him to the end zone. He's going to be taken down. This is going to be inside the 10-yard line. So Atkins and Williams able to connect today. 41-yard gain. Atkins quickly back to the line. Now they're going to run this with Finley. Finley off the left edge, turns up field, big hit, and he's going to be dropped at the one-yard line. So second and goal from the one coming up. Pioneers again quickly back to the ball, wasting no time on this drive. Is this going to be Finley again, or is Atkins going to keep it? They're going to give it to Finley. No, Atkins going to go to Tannis in the end zone. He catches it. Touchdown, Pioneers. There was a ton of contact between Tannis and the defender. Matters not. Tannis was able to just bring that ball down. What I thought, there was no chance he was going to get to that. Watch a replay right here. So they're going to fake that to Finley. Whoop, just a little fade right to the corner. Thought there was no way, but he reaches out over the shoulder grab. Touchdown, Pioneers. Well done. Special teams unit is on for the Pioneers. Good snap, good placement. Extra point is up. Extra point is good. So quickly into the second quarter, and the Pioneers are able to tie this game up at 14 apiece with 14-22 remaining in the second quarter. So now the Pioneers are going to have to kick with the wind in their face. 
but they really weren't bombing away even with the wind at their back. So you can expect just another little chip shot, try and get it up in the air into the wind so it holds up and the special teams can get there for the cover. At least that's my guess. What do you think? Let us know. All right, Ravens special team heading onto the field. Pioneers getting lined up. Tell you, the Ravens have a lot of respect for Pioneers kicker because they've got people very deep. In this wind, I don't think anyone's going to. Now they're moving up. <laughs> I was going to say. So the Pioneers, just another little chip shot. Ball caught at the 30. Moving forward towards the sideline, taking down from behind. Ball's going to be down right at the 35. Todd. And Todd with the return. Ball down the 35 yard line. Now the Ravens ready to go. Three to the left of the quarterback, one to the right. Send a man in motion. Equal let out on two each side. This is where they're going to run the ball right at the middle. Nope. Quarterback, no step drop. Flings it out to his receiver on the right side. Wrestled out of bounds. Gain of six to seven. Pass is complete to Ethan Parrott. Brought down by Anthony. There we go. We've got some more Pioneers watching from Fredericksburg, Texas. Again, warmer there than it is here. Second and four for the Raven offense. Yeah, this was a little run pass option. They take the handoff. Boom, big hit right at the first down marker. Man knocked out of bounds, and the Pioneer defender slow getting up as Witherspoon had quite the collision with the Pioneer defender. And we, we will see who that is. It's down for the Pioneers being checked on right now by the Benedictine training staff as he was right along their sideline, now being checked at by both sides. What number do you think that is? 38, thank you. So this is Cade Williams down on the far sideline. So both teams are going to kind of get to their sidelines and huddle up as the trainers take a look. Pioneer player still receiving attention along the sideline. They've got him sitting up now, though, which is good. Like I said, it was a big collision right at the first down marker, and this was the defender in on that collision. Now helped up to his feet. Now going to be... Helped off the field. And I'm sorry, okay, so this is 29. Now that we have a better look at the number, this is Jackson Malone. 
defensive back. Definitely walking with a limp favoring that left leg. Let's say we're looking at a lower body injury. And they are walking him off very gingerly. No, I'm definitely not a doctor, especially sitting right up here in the booth. But yeah, it took a big hit. I don't know if it's leg or if they're looking at a you know, possible concussion situation. At the yard line. But they're going to get him over to the training table. Yeah, he really looks like he's favoring that leg. Let's see what they start looking at here. So quick play for the Ravens. They're going to sling it out to their running back. He's got some blockers, but the Pioneer defense, they are quick to get to him. And he's going to be knocked down. Let's see if they're going to give him. They're going to give him anything. Looks like no gain on that play as the Pioneer defense was waiting for him. Trainers still talking to Malone. They have not once looked at his legs, so I think this is going to be concussion protocol type situation. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and let the, let the trainers do their thing. If I get any update, I'll share it with you. I normally do not. High snap, taken by Kettle, hands it off. Here's a run. Mm, going to be short of the first down. It's going to bring up third, though. Third and manageable. Witherspoon on the carry. So, yeah, so Witherspoon with the carry. Now, Witherspoon looks like he might have gotten his bell rung. He's going to come off the field. So third and five now facing the Ravens offense. They're in Pioneer territory by a couple yards. Empty backfield. Now a man comes in motion. Can join the quarterback on his right side. Another man in motion. They're going to fake the sweep. Quarterback's looking there. He's going to fling it out wide to the receiver. Foot race to the first down marker. He reaches across. I believe they're going to move the chains on this now. Is there a flag on the play? I'm not 100% sure. The officials all pointing to something. They say there's definitely collision out of bounds. All right, so another personal foul on the Pioneers. This is a late hit out of bounds. And this is Jalen Burke called for this. So that's going to be at the end of the play. So first down and a lot more. Ball now placed at the 29-yard line. So a second personal foul that gets a lot of ground covered for the Ravens offense. Now quarterback's going to keep it looking right. Throws right. Has a man on the sideline and now wrestled out of bounds. That pass was completed to Gathright. And that's going to be enough for a Raven first down as they are really picking up steam on this drive, moving the ball well and getting close to the end zone. And change some personnel as the Raven offense. Again, the Raven offense never in a hurry. They are not in a rush. Empty backfield at the moment for the quarterback. Sends a man, little run pass option, and this time the Pioneer defense equal to the task, and down he goes, minimal gain, maybe two yards on this play. Do believe that was Todd with the carry, and they are going to officially give him no gain. Now, did they give him two? Oh, look at that, they gave him two. I was just, I was a little early, the stick hadn't moved yet. Kettle's trying to get him with a hard snap now. Hard count, I'm sorry. Now fakes the pitch out wide, looking, gets flushed out of the pocket, being pursued, throws on the run to the end zone, has a man, touchdown, Ravens. Able to get freed up was Reed Levi. 
And that is a complete pass in the end zone for a touchdown. Benedictine. 18 yards on the reception. So the Pioneers were close. They were able to pressure the quarterback out of the pocket, but he's able to throw on the run as he was rolling right. Hits Levi in the end zone for a Raven touchdown. Ooh, low snap. But, oh, no, it's no good. You say the snap came in low. I thought the placeholder, the holder was able to get, get it placed in time. But, no, the, the kick goes wide left. So that's a missed extra point for the Ravens. Makes it 20 to 14. Some of the cheerleaders are getting this dance on, and some of them are sitting it out as it is ridiculously cold. <laughs> I would say move more. That will warm you up, says the guy sitting in a heated booth. No illusions. I'm a big wimp. I'm sitting up here in the booth. All right, so the Ravens now. Wind at their back. Let's see if they're going to try and air this one out. Their kicker looking for the full five-yard run up here. Nope, he's going to go back more. Oh, he wants the seven-yard run up. Here we go. He's looking to blast one. Put it into orbit. Kaboom! And it's going deep. And bounces in the end zone for a touchback. And the Pioneers will take over on the 25-yard line. Yeah, the Pioneers let that bounce as the return man was just hanging out at the 10-yard line. It did not bounce into the end zone by much. If that thing had checked up about a yard sooner, we'd be in a little bit of trouble right now. Right there. Well, it actually bounced before the end zone and <laughs> bounces in by a yard. Whew. That almost worked out really well for the Ravens. Atkins in the offense back on the field. Touchdown here and an extra point. Could get the lead back for the Pioneers. They're going to give it to Cherry, trying to stretch it to the left. Turns up field. That's a good run by Cherry on first down. Going to be enough to move the sticks. Gain of right at 10 yards, but they're going to give him the first down. Away we go. Catch the bottom of your screen there, Tannis. We'll see if they leave him one-on-one. -on -one. He's looking. Oh, now that was kind of in between two receivers there was that attempt by Atkins. It was right in between Rodriguez and Tanis. I'm not exactly sure which one he was aiming for. I think he was actually trying to go Rodriguez underneath. And they couldn't connect. St. Louis comes back into the game. Two receivers each side for Atkins. Drops back, looking left, going through the progressions. Comes middle. Ooh, underthrew his man, but able to come up with the catch was Cherry out of the backfield. Pass complete to Sean Cherry. So that's going to get it to much more manageable third down. Third and one for the Pioneers. Ball on the 44-yard line. Cherry remains in the game. Remember, Finley was having some success on the ground. They're going to give it to Cherry, and he's not going to get there. They might actually take a yard away on this. Indeed, they are. So that's going to bring up fourth and two. As Cherry just trying to go right up the middle, found no space. Now with that, reluctantly, the offense leaves the field. Here comes the punt unit for the Pioneers. They're going to be punting into this wind. So this could be some really good field position starting up for the Ravens. A little more blue sky starting to poke through. The sun might be out in a moment. Not that that's going to help a whole lot. Still cold. Oh, the Pioneers are faking. And I don't think they're going to get it. Nope. Pioneers on the fake punt are not going to get there. And the play is finally blown dead as it just turned into a big old rugby scrum. And the Pioneers couldn't get there. Ooh, unfortunate for the Pioneers. 
The officials are all going to have a word. Some pioneers trying to talk the officials into giving us a first down, but I don't see that happening. For my eyes, he did not make it. Yep, it is officially Raven ball. So here comes the pioneer defense and the Raven offense. Ravens now gifted magical field position. This ball's on the 43 yard line. They're already in pioneer territory. So Kettle now takes it, drops back, looking right, throwing right, going for the end zone. Again, winning his back. Everyone's got their head turned. Is that a pick? That's an interception. Pioneer is able to come up with the interception in the end zone. Anthony Sal gets the ball right back for the MNU offense. I mean, I actually think that's a great idea by the Ravens. I mean, try and hit that home run right after something like a fake punt that you stopped. But Anthony Sal have none of it. See Kettle looking, looking, throws it right. Head turned. So, yeah, there's a lot of contact between both players. It doesn't matter. The heads are turned. They're playing the ball. Sal, great position, comes up with the pick. So almost like that last series never happened for the Pioneers. They have the ball on the 25-yard line, just like they did before. And we'll just pretend like the fake punt never happened. Sound good to everyone else? Good. Glad we're all agreed. Atkins going to send Williams in motion. We're going to give it to Finley now. Finley into the game. He was trying to find some space. Started inside, cut a little outside, able to come up a yard. Ooh, heater just turned back on. There it goes. So St. Louis, Tannis, it looks like Williams, all at the bottom of your screen. Action pass, throwing out wide. St. Louis has it and steps out of bounds. Not able to get the first down, but close. I think it's going to bring up about a third and two for the Pioneer offense. Pioneers have slowed their pace a little bit. Looking to the sideline, they have their play. Tannis alone on the bottom. You can see they've got the safety over to help. Finley trying to get outside. He does. Turns up field. He's got enough for the first down. That's going to get the chains moving for the Pioneers. So the power game of Cherry not working so great for the Pioneers, but the speed game of Finley has been working well. Finley getting those hard yards when they need them on you know, third and short situations. And Finley again, right edge, and he's got room. Cuts inside, still running. Cuts inside yet again at midfield. Now dragged down in Raven territory. Best run of the afternoon for Finley. Cameron Finley gets 21 yards on that carry. First down, Pioneers. Ball at the 49-yard line, Raven territory. St. Louis is going to head off on this play. Tight end, Masunas. Lining out wide. See if they're going to get the big body over the middle. They're going to hand it off. Cherry. Boy, he caught everyone sleeping, still moving. He takes that up to the 30-yard line. Everybody bit on this play action, but, and they all thought it was going to be a pass. They collapsed hard on Atkins, but he was able to hand it off to Cherry. Cherry right at the gut. Comes up with the first down and a lot more. Ball placed at the 30. Blitz coming. Atkins got to get rid of it quick. Gets away from one. Now wrestled down by the next. Atkins had a, had a chance to remind him and able to get that ball out of there, but defense too quick as the blitz was coming fast at him. That's going to be a sack on the play. Loss of about five yards for the Pioneers. Going to bring up second and 15. So Young is credited with that sack. And Atkins was able to dance out of little trouble, but not all of it. Hate it when that happens. Atkins dropping back, pressure coming. Over the middle, has a man, and he's down. They're able to get most of that back as that pass goes to Tannis. Yard pass complete to Caleb Tannis from Atkins. 
So third and four coming up for the Pioneers. Tanis at the bottom of the screen. And this is kind of his zone right here, but they're going to bring safety all the way over. They're just double teaming him from the start. Atkins looks right, hit as he throws, so that ball falls to the turf. Incomplete pass. Brown, the intended target, but again, he was Atkins was hit as he threw, so the ball just goes down to the turf. This is fourth down. Pioneer offense remaining on the field. They're lining up. They're going to try and get him with a hard count. They're actually going to go for it. Inquiring minds want to know. Ooh, right now, Atkins looks like he's going for that hard count. Play clock down to 10. Looking to the bench. Maybe the Pioneer's just going to take this down, call a timeout. Indeed. So the Pioneer's bluffing a little bit on fourth down. They call a timeout, and you imagine now the timeout, their kicking unit will come onto the field. They're going to try the field goal. Ball is placed on the 24-yard line. So I do believe that on the 24-yard line, this will end up being something like a 37-yard attempt. Somewhere in that area. And 20 to 14 is your score. 5.43 remaining before halftime. I don't have any official update on Jackson Malone, but he is still on the trainer's table and has not moved from the spot in which they've placed him since he got there. So teammates have been coming over and checking on him, but I would put his return as doubtful. So the Pioneer offense is coming out of the huddle. After that timeout, Atkins all alone in the backfield. Four receivers to his left. Zero zip zilch out, lined up out to his right. Now Finley in motion. Finley stops at the edge of the line. Atkins dropping back. Looking, looking. Man over the middle has got him. Pioneers just had enough targets out there that they couldn't cover everyone. The offensive line with great protection. That's a first down completion, I believe, to Tyler Masunas. So tight end Masunas was able to come up with the completion. First down, Pioneers. They keep the drive alive. Atkins fakes it to Cherry. Going for the end zone. He's got Tannis. Can Tannis come up with it? No, knocked away. Boy, it looks like Tannis had a pin to his shoulder for a, just a moment. But couldn't secure it. Then Tannis actually falls on the track, which can't feel great. AstroTurf feels much better than track. So he looks like he got his elbow cut up a little bit. Comes off. Second and 10, ball on the 13-yard line. Sun coming out. Defense will have to look into that. Atkins over the middle. Oh, just under through Williams. Williams had a lot of green in front of him, too, but that pass was a little too low. Williams had to reach almost to his shoe tops to try and come up with it. Just couldn't, couldn't reel it in. Atkins, a good drop. Had Williams wide open. Just under through it. Just a hair. Third and ten for the Pioneers. Cherry is in the backfield. Menifee on the field as well. Lining up almost in the tight end position. Fake it to Cherry. Going quickly to the end zone. Has Williams. Williams brought down. They're going to place this at the five-yard line. So on third and ten, they come up with five. Pioneers can get a first down before getting into the end zone. First down marker is that three-yard line. So again, decision time for the Pioneers. Wait a minute, why are we moving this back? Was there a penalty? Yeah, there was something on the Pioneers, so it's still third down. What did he say it was? Okay, so it's third and 15. Well, I did not hear the official say anything. I didn't even see a flag. 
So sorry about that, everyone. I don't know what the call was, but it's still third down, third and 15 for the Pioneers. Over the middle to Williams. Williams is going to be wrestled down about the 15, 16 yard line. So the Pioneers didn't take a shot. They go underneath, and he's tackled immediately. Was Williams? It's going to bring on the field goal unit for the Pioneers. Hmm. Strange. Very strange. Wish I knew what that call was, but oh well. So the Pioneers with their first field goal attempt of the afternoon. They have a couple extra points, first field goal. Good snap, good placement, kick is blocked. Ravens are able to block it and everyone just falls on it to kill this play. So the Ravens have a missed extra point. The Pioneers now have a blocked field goal. The special teams departments for both squads, maybe not putting this game on the highlight reel. Kylie's kick is blocked by Joel Lois. So now the Raven offense back onto the field with the lead 20 to 14. 408 remaining in the half. Two receivers each side of the quarterback. Ooh, got the Pioneer defense to jump, but they didn't snap the ball. So defense resets. He's going to throw left. Has a man along the sideline. Cut it back inside. Now the Pioneer is able to wrestle down Gathright. Gathright definitely the primary receiver for Kettle. That's who he's looking for. Able to move the chains. First and ten. Ball is on the 37-yard line. Kettle's got everyone at the bottom of your screen. Now design keeper for Kettle. He just tucks it, runs. He's hit at the 45, brought down closer to the 46. He's going to be right at the first down marker. And like I said earlier, Kettle, not a small person. 6'4", 210. It's a second and one facing the Raven offense. Now, big shift for the Raven offense. Leaves an empty backfield for Kettle. He drops back. Pressure comes, flushes him out to the right. Now he's going to run. A lot of green in front of him. And so now we have got more than enough for the first down, and they're going to go into Pioneer territory, are the Ravens. Once Kettle got away from the pressure, everyone else was back in coverage. He had a lot of space in front of him. He was able to use it. Ball in Pioneer territory at the 45-yard line. Now here's just a little run right up the middle. And these are some hard yards. Good run by Dalton Witherspoon. Witherspoon able to take it right up to the next first down marker. All right, they're going to mark him a couple yards short. Boy, it looked like he got there, but okay, we'll take the short mark. Sure, why not? But a good run by Witherspoon. Again, the Ravens starting with the empty backfield. Don't believe it for a minute. Someone's going to join that quarterback. Oh, look, it's Witherspoon. Called it. Now Witherspoon has it going off the left edge. Pioneer's trying to close down. He's able to get past. It's foot race to the end zone. And now finally upended it around the 15-yard line. Witherspoon, Witherspoon knocked down. But, boy, he was, he was dead heading along that sideline for the end zone. The last Pioneer that could stop him did. First down for Benedictine. So ball's on the 13-yard line, so Benedictine can't actually get a first down before scoring. Feel the breeze coming through the window. Doesn't feel like it's gotten any warmer. Kettle trying to draw the defense off sides. No success on that first attempt at a hard count. Now he takes it. 
gives it to Witherspoon. Witherspoon off the left edge. And taken down. Minimal gain. No, more than minimal. Okay, they're going to get them about halfway there. They're getting down to the part of the field absolutely farthest away from where I am in the booth. Kittle now sends his tight end in motion. Coming to the left. Ooh, fake the pitch. Kettle rolls out. He's still looking, not running. Throws it to the end zone. Has a man in the back corner. Was he in? And the official signals touchdown. Now they officially they quickly have to run over to break up some extracurricular activities, but that is a touchdown. Kettle throws it right into the back left corner of the end zone. Comes up with the points. Let's see. Let's see one more replay of that if we could. You can see it in slow motion right here. I'll let you guys judge for yourselves. There's the throw right in the corner. Yes, yes, indeed. Toes are down. Ethan Parrott on the touchdown catch. So Parrott credited with the touchdown completion. A player down for M and U. One of the defensive linemen who was up at the front of the play, not the back end of the play. Get that number when we can, but being checked out by the MNU training staff. So right now the score 26 to 14. And even though the Ravens missed that one extra point attempt, it looks like they're going to try another one. Not going to try and go for two to make up for that. So player down for the Pioneers is Marco Fl Marcos Flores. Yeah, he's coming off the field. Only his right arm in a very strange manner. So arm shoulder injury. Again, my diagnosis from you know 400 feet away up in a booth. Don't know how it couldn't be accurate, right? Lined up for the extra point. Good snap. Good placement. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So the. Extra point try is good. They get their little kinks ironed out after the attempt that went awry. And that makes it 27-14 in favor of the Ravens. Over the Pioneers as we are ticking ever closer to halftime. 54 seconds left. Remember, the Pioneers will start the third quarter with the football. They won the toss, elected to defer. So St. Louis and Williams in the back. They are ready to return this kick, which I don't expect is going to meet them. Well, no, I guess they did try and bomb the last one. We'll see. Kicked it hard enough for the touchback last time. Both teams have also incorporated some chip shots into their kickoff game. It's trying to get it to one of the up men. Stop from a big return. See what happens here. No, they're kicking it deep, but this is going to be returnable for Williams. No, he's going to let it bounce. Into the end zone it goes for a touchback. Williams was kind of being chased backwards and a little to his right. I think if he could have caught that cleanly without already being in motion, he would have. Instead, elects to just let that bounce away. The Pioneers are going to have 54 seconds remaining in this half to see what they can do. Throwing into the wind. I would not be surprised if you saw a few, a few runs, although Benedictine does have all three of their timeouts. You never know. They could elect to try and get this ball back if their defense can stop the Pioneers quickly and they're going to give it to Finley Finley up the middle comes up with some positive yards at least maybe two on the play now they're going to give him one and neither side using a timeout Pioneers have two timeouts but indicting one now the Pioneers are going to throw Atkins to Finley out of the backfield now Finley's going to step out of bounds so that will stop the clock with 29 seconds remaining in the half. Third 
third and eight. As Menifee almost runs into the official. They might frown upon that. Get out of the way, official. Atkins going to drop back. Looking, looking. Oh, he's got Williams. Williams wide open. First down. Trying to make a miss. Gets the ball up to the 44-yard line. So good completion to Williams. Positive yards for the Pioneers. And Pioneers went ahead and called a timeout. Maybe they're going to see if they can get a few more plays, possibly get up in field goal range, get some points on the board before halftime. Trailing by 13, 27 to 14 currently. Yeah, I think on my count we've got one time out left in this half. We used one earlier in the half. Yeah, if you are in Olathe, make sure you're at the Cook Center at 7 p.m. It is the championship game in volleyball. Women's volleyball team trying to take home the conference title tonight, 7 o'clock. Did we ever figure out who are we playing tonight? Park? Yeah, I figured it'd be Park. So Park University against your Pioneers for the conference championship. All right, 21 seconds remaining. Ball's on the 43-yard line. St. Louis in motion, coming from the bottom of the screen, working at the top. He's going over the middle now. Whistle blown, flags down. False start on the Pioneers. Mm. So that's not what you wanted on this. Damian Ruiz for shame, for shame. 18 seconds left in the half. This will definitely change the Pioneers' approach. Maybe just a run up the middle and try and get this clock to all zeros and get into the locker room. And one of the clock reset to 21, so now 21 seconds remaining in the half. Atkins, low snap, he's able to handle it, throws it outside, interception, no, ball's incomplete. Boy, the defender was there. Just could not secure that interception, but that was a dangerous pass by Atkins. I don't even think Finley saw it as he was trying to hit Finley along the sideline. Finley's head wasn't even turned yet. Broken up by Second down 15. So James Farmer Coles checked in for the Pioneers. Haven't seen him much today, but he's in now. 17 seconds remaining. Ball on the 38. Pioneers still trying to come up with something. Ravens showing blitz. They are going to blitz. Picked up by the Pioneers. Atkins chased out of the pocket, rolling left, looking, looking, looking. He's got a throw, throws on the run, underthrown, and out of bounds. So eight seconds remaining. And another player down for the Pioneers. Told you in these cold weather games, everything hurts more. So Farmer Cole came into the game, and they attempt to get it to him on his first time in. Now lineman down, flings his helmet off in frustration. He's going to be checked out by the MNU training staff with eight seconds remaining in the half. The cameraman might be frozen.
So the down pioneer we found is Jaden Fuller. They've got him sitting up now, gonna help him up to his feet. Fuller, the senior offensive lineman. He's being carried off by a couple players. Lower leg injury again, I believe. Third and 15 coming up for the Pioneer offense. Eight seconds left in the half. <laughs> the official signaling for the Pioneers, come on, get out here, it's cold. The official's not messing around with this Pioneer huddle. They started the play clock, which is already now down to 17 seconds. Down to 15. Pioneer's offense not even lined up yet. Eight, seven, six. Atkins needs to hurry. Five, four. Blitz coming again from the Ravens. Two, one. Ball snapped at one. And they're just going to hand it off to Finley. Finley's got some space, making people miss, trying to bust it outside. Hold on to the ball. And he is now taken down near the 45-yard line, and that is going to do it for the first half of action. So at the end of the first half, your, your score is Benedictine Ravens 27, and your MNU Pioneers 14. So the clock is set for 20 minutes. Go ahead and order another pizza, refill your beverage, then come back in about, mm, let's say, 16 to 17 minutes. We'll bring you the first half stats before we start third quarter action. So we will be right back, everybody.
All right, welcome back, everybody. If you can hear my voice, come back to your screens. All right, let's talk first half action. Blake Atkins for the Pioneers. He was 17 for 26 in that first half, 220 yards, two touchdowns, sacked twice. Cameron Finley on the ground is leading the way for the Pioneers. Nine attempts, 61 yards, his longest being a 19-yard. And then Cherry, six carries for 34 yards, 19 is his longest. Isaiah Williams leading the way receiving for the Pioneers. Five receptions for 73 yards, his longest was 33. Caleb Tannis, four receptions for 70 yards and two touchdowns. See, Paul St. Louis, three receptions, 48 yards. And then Finley, three receptions out of the backfield for 17 yards. Over on the other side, Kettle is 9 for 12. He has two touchdowns and one interception. He's thrown for 135 yards. On the ground, Witherspoon, nine attempts for 80 yards. He is having a good day so far. That was a great first half. Kettle was right behind him, five carries for 33 yards and a touchdown. Gathright has a carry for eight yards. Mills, three carries, eight yards and a touchdown. And then receiving-wise, they haven't been throwing it a whole lot. Their leader is Levi with two receptions, 45 yards, and one touchdown. That was the tight end who caught it in the end zone. Uh, oh, there was a second one. Where was he? Uh, Peratt or Peralta? Uh, let's see, Peratt, I think it is. Two receptions, 15 yards, and a touchdown. So 135 total rushing yards for the Ravens in this first half. 78 yards for the Pioneers. Receiving-wise, the Pioneers 228 yards receiving. 135 for the Ravens. Let's see if there's anything else worth noting. Time of possession was actually really close. Very even. 15-26 for the Pioneers. 14-34 for the Ravens. Third down efficiency. The Ravens are 2 for 3 on their third downs. Pioneers are 4 for 9. And then fourth down efficiency. Just the 0 for 1 for the Ravens. That first drive stopped by the Pioneer defense. And then the Pioneers. Two conversions on three attempts on fourth down. And they had that failed fake punt. So we are ready for third quarter action as the Ravens are just about set to kick off. They'll have the wind at their back as they kick to the Pioneers. Sun has come out here in Olathe. So they're going to have some sun. Still not much relief. It's still pretty chilly out there. Right at 33 degrees. Here as we start the second half. So players are going to have to try and stay warm here in the second half. The wind out of the north. It looks like it's calmed down a little bit. The flag's not as stiff as they were. We're underway. Big kick. It's going to be fielded by the Pioneers at the five-yard line. And Williams heads up with this return. Runs into his own man. Now bounces outside. Being chased. Decides to go backwards. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. And he's ultimately down at the five-yard line. So this did not work out well for the Pioneers. As Williams trying to create, ended up going backwards. So, you know, just wanted to make the start of the second half interesting. I see what you're doing. So here comes the Pioneer offense. Atkins back onto the field. He's going to have Finley in the backfield with him. Again, ball is actually on the seven-yard line. So the seven-yard line is where the Pioneer offensive drive starts to start this second half of action. Atkins going to give to Finley. Finley faked the end around and is tackled in the end zone for a safety. Well... Yeah, I don't know why the officials were even discussing it. That was a safety as that trick play went nowhere very fast. So if you're a fan of safeties, then you're happy today. The officials are conferring. Not sure what exactly they're talking about, but there we go. Now it's official. 29 to 14 is your score. And the Pioneers will now free kick it to the Ravens. So on a safety, you get two points and the ball back. So now the Pioneer special teams post safety unit has to head out onto the field. The officials they're not letting the teams dilly-dally on the sideline. They are blowing the whistle and trying to get people out on the field. Again, it's cold. Last game of the year. The officials are ready to go. Here come the Pioneer special teams. And 
Trying to get the Ravens back onto the field. The Ravens are going to start with great field position. After this free kick from Pella. And he has to get that ball kicked off by the 20 yard line. Standing just about two yards back. And underway, a little low line drive kick. Six Pioneer bounce field at about the 37 yard line. Return past the 40, cuts inside at the 45 at midfield and stumbles to the ground. Ball down about the 49 yard line in Pioneer territory. Again, the Ravens are going to start this drive on the Pioneer side of the field. First down and 10, Benedictus at the 49-yard line of MNU. As much as they ran the ball in the first half, I expect you could almost double that here in the second half as Benedictine now is just probably going to try and get this clock down to zeros. Although they're starting with the empty backfield, they'll probably send the running back back there in motion. Man, watch him make a liar out of me. Nope, there he goes. Yeah, they're going to fake the handoff. Looks like a pass down the middle of the field. Oh, and he caught it. Wow, nice catch. Drug down about the five-yard line. Uh, I think that was a long completion. That was not to Gathright. That was to Austin Bateau. It's going to be my guess if you're a Benedictine fan listening to me, and I don't know why you are because you guys have your own radio crew here. Uh, I apologize if I butchered his name. I'm on the other end of the booth from the MNU coaches. And this is the most animated I've ever heard them. I'm glad I'm not next to them right now. Kettle has man in motion. They're going to give it to Witherspoon. This play is blown dead. Which leads me to believe there's going to be a false start on somebody involved in this. Oh, no. Benedictine called a timeout before snapping the ball. So that had to have been called by the sideline then. Apparently they didn't like what they saw and called the timeout, so they're going to use a timeout here early in the third quarter. They want to talk things over as they are facing the first and goal from the five-yard line. No, I'm sorry. Three. They're on the third. Three-yard line. We said at the top of the broadcast, this is it for both teams, finishing up their seasons. Pioneers football will not be back until August of 2023. So hopefully you're getting your fill now. We're about to go footballless for a while. So Kettle has Witherspoon in the backfield with him. Lined up to his left. One receiver on each side out wide. Tight end in motion. We have seen he is a passing threat. They're going to give this to Witherspoon. Off the right side, he's drugged down short. Good tackle by the Pioneer defense. Yeah, that's going to bring up second and goal. I believe they gave him a yard on that carry, so second and goal from the two-yard line. Now an official timeout as there is a Raven down in the middle. The pile there, can't see who that is. Number nine. Number nine, that is Reed Levi. Oh, the aforementioned tight end. Again, he's proven to be a, a threat in the passing game, and he was in to block on this. And he is down at the moment. So both, both squads are going to head to their respective sidelines for a huddle with the coaches as he's checked out. Able to get him up sitting up all right. Now they're going to help him to his feet. And walking off, noticeable limp. Favoring his right leg. The clouds are trying to reclaim the sky. So we're in a little mix right now, a little mix of sun and clouds. Sun's high enough, not benefiting either side. 
But I just felt you should get a weather update. All right, here we go. Second and goal. Ball on the two-yard line. Witherspoon remains in the backfield with Kettle. Man goes in motion. Working left. They're looking, looking. They're going to throw. They've got him out left. And there's the touchdown. And this, again, was to Austin Bateau for touchdown catch. So there's a touchdown by Benedictine extending their lead, which is now at 35 to 14. And they're getting lined up for the extra point. Yeah, as the Ravens trying to pull away here in the early stages of the third quarter. And the extra point is up. Extra point is good. 36 14 is your score. The Pioneers offense about to head out there after they field this kickoff. Again, the Pioneers were in a terrible spot after that last kickoff. Kickoff. <laughs> the returner, maybe. Live stream, maybe. Tough to say. Somewhere in this world, someone can hear me. I believe in it. All right, the Ravens lined up for the kickoff. Kicks underway. Kind of a low line drive. Fielded by the Pioneers about the 15 yard line. They spin, trying to get up the field. Makes one tackler miss. Still moving. Lowers the shoulder and down he goes. That was LaMarcus McDonald. Good return from a linebacker, nonetheless. He's able to get the ball. Yeah. Let's see where they place this ball. It's going to be past the 25. Ball at the 28-yard line. Impressive stretching display by the official who's standing over the ball. Well done, well done. Stay limber out there. Atkins. He's got Cherry in the backfield with him. Three wide receivers wide to the right. You're going to fake it to Cherry. He wants to go long distance now. Wrapped up and taken about down by the defense. Thankfully, that clock in his head went off. He knew he was in a world of trouble, kind of tucked that ball knowing he's about to get hit. Indeed, he was. Loss of five on the play by Atkins. The secondary for the Ravens had all the MNU receivers bottled up. Pioneers now facing a second and 14. They're going to give it to Cherry up the middle, and he's going to have to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up third and forever. We'll see if the Raven special teams is going to send everybody to try and get this punt. Pioneers on their one punt attempt went for a fake. That did not equal a first down. There's not going to be a fake this time. Kicking into the wind. Wobbly. There it goes. Low line drive. Bounces short of the 50. And now down by the Pioneers, probably around the 48-yard line. So another Raven drive that will start in Pioneer territory. And we're still having more technical difficulties, if anyone can hear me. If not, I'm talking to myself, which is one of the first signs of insanity. If I start answering myself, then we have a problem. All right, 36-14 is your score. 12 3 remaining, third quarter. Ravens with the ball and the lead. And Kettle's going to drop back to pass, looking, has his... Ooh, there we go. Ty, I'm sorry, the running back came out of the backfield and was running loose down the left sideline, not able to bring in that pass. As the Pioneer defense closed quickly, heard the footsteps, and just kind of alligator-armed it a little bit. Falls incomplete. Flag on the play. Field mic not working for the official, so I'm not sure what the call was. But they have moved Benedictine back. So first and 20.
I guess it was going to be ineligible downfield on that play. Well, I heard that whistle. There we go. Way to get loud, official, sir. Man in motion going to the top of your screen. Kettle looking left, looking left, looking left. Has a man on the sideline. Incomplete pass. Boy, Kettle put a lot of mustard on that pass. So second and 20 coming up. Oh, did they say complete? You're kidding. Wow, I didn't think he caught that, especially not in bounds. Okay. I need some binoculars up here. Apparently my glasses just aren't doing it. So ball at the 45-yard line. Second and 17. Kettle right now showing empty backfield. Man in motion. They're going to fake the sweep. Kettle dropping back. Had some pressure. Tipped at the line, and Pioneers couldn't come up with the interception. So, yeah, that was was good uh, deflection by the defensive line, able to get someone got their hand up in the air, was able to kind of knock that pass. Didn't knock it down, but knocked it offline. So third and 17 coming up for the Raven offense. Raven surprised me a little bit, the fact that they have been throwing on each attempt. Pioneers having a big old time getting the right people on the field. Yikes, they finally get there. Empty backfield now for the Ravens. Dropping back, looking, looking, throws over the middle of the field, has a man. No, knocked away. He might have had it in his hands, but with the contact from Troy Hall, the ball falls incomplete. It's fourth down, fourth and 17. So that's going to bring in the punk unit for the Ravens. So they're going to send this away. Is there a flag? There is a flag. Well, this could be huge right here on whatever this call is. Oh, my. Oh, okay. That's better. <laughs> An unsportsmanlike penalty was called on number one, and they, they pointed to M and U. Then they have reversed the call. It was an unsportsman on Benedictine. I did not see what happened. I did not see how this was a unsportsman, so I apologize. It was away from the ball. That moves them back for a fourth and forever. And they get the punt away. Good punt. They had the wind at their back. Good hang time. Fair catch called for and granted. So the ball is going to be at the 26-yard line. That's where the offense for MNU is going to take over. First and 10, MNU at the 26-yard line. That was going to be about a fourth and 33, I do believe. But punt it away. So Pioneer offense back onto the field after their last drive stalled rather quickly and without a lot of fireworks. So the Pioneers have got to get this ball moving. This time is a ticking. 11-16 left in the third quarter. And the Pioneers losing 36 to 14. Got the Ravens right where they want them. We're going to go with that. Whoa, high pass intercepted. Atkins just misses his receiver. Off of the fingertips, the safety able to come up with it. Now he has wrestled to the turf, so that was a quick turnover by the Pioneers. That was an interception by Jackson Hoskins. Of the Ravens. Again, it was a the pass was intended for Caden Brown, but too high, out of reach. You got a fingertip on it, nothing more. And falls right into the safety's waiting arms. So the Pioneers had a good defensive stand, but then the offense gives it right back to the Ravens. Pioneers showing a little bit of blitz, so they're going to hand off all the Ravens. There's Witherspoon off the right edge, and he just works his way forward. He's got enough for the first down. This is going to move the chains. 13-yard gain for Witherspoon, closing in on a 100-yard game for himself.
this is what I was expecting to start the third quarter for the Ravens. Take their time on offense, run the ball, just let the clock run. With a spoon coming out of the backfield, shoulder fake by the quarterback. Now he's going to go for the end zone, and he's got him. Touchdown for Kettle. And I do believe this was good to, yep, Ja'Shawn Todd with the touchdown reception from Kettle. So that is going to extend the Raven lead. And apparently they did not listen to me about the uh, use up the clock. They went ahead and took a shot for the end zone. And good snap, good placement. Extra point is up. And the extra point is good. So 43 to 14 is the score with 10.34 remaining in the third quarter. Mm. Colorful language from coaches. Oh my goodness. I am noticing on the Pioneer sideline, Parsons is warming up. Now that might just be because it's super cold outside or the Pioneers might be looking to Get a spark, so worth noting that Adrian Parsons warming up for the Pioneers. After that drive, Kettle is 13 for 18, 215 yards, four touchdowns on only the one interception. So Kettle's having a good day. Witherspoon, he's at 11 carries for 93 yards. There's a kick all the way into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Kick into the end zone for a touchback. First down and 10, Emmett U at the 25. So now we're going to see who trots out there, if it's going to be Atkins or Parsons. Again, Parsons was getting loose on the sideline. Could just be to stay warm, or we could be making a change. Indeed, the change has been made. Heading out onto the field for quarterback, Adrian Parsons. Remember Parsons last year in the shootout with Benedictine, which m and came out on the short end of, he still set an NAIA record for yards in a game. He threw for over 600 yards that game. It was ridiculous. So we'll see if he's got any third quarter magic in him. He's going to sling it out wide to Tannis right out of the gates. Tannis trying to move forward. And he's going to get about halfway to the first down marker. Gain of five or six. See the Pioneers, they're not going back. Well, they're, I'd say they're up in the tempo maybe a little bit. Nothing like they were in the first quarter. Parsons takes it. Fakes it to Finley. Over the middle of Tannis. Tannis with the catch. Able to move forward. He's crossing midfield. Just enough little stutter in his step that he was throwing the uh, Ravens defenders off. And he just kept moving forward until someone finally got in front of him and brought him down. So good completion for Tannis. He's going to head off the field for a moment. Caden Brown checks in for him. So we got Brown, St. Louis at the bottom of your screen. Again, Parsons. Trying to keep it going here, get the offense moving. Parsons fakes it to Finley, slings it out wide, has Williams. Williams pass one defender, brought down by the second. Gain of seven to eight. Williams brought down hard, a little slow getting up. Getting very cold on this turf, and he's going to hobble off. Again, it's like getting tackled on a sheet of ice out there. That stuff, there's no way it feels good when it's this cold out. Second and five coming up. Ball on the 42-yard line for the Pioneers. Parsons looking to the bench, has his play. And it's going to go in motion for the Pioneers, going all the way to the top. Passing over the middle, and we've got a flag on the play. Incomplete pass. Let's see if this is going to be on the Pioneers. Indeed it is. So this play, all for naught. So they could take, they could accept the penalty, and it will stay second down, move the Pioneers backward, 
or they could leave it at third and five. Ineligible downfield. So five-yard penalty back to the original line of scrimmage. Still second down, so second and ten coming up for the Pioneer offense. Tannis checks back in. Menifee and Farmer Cole going to the top. Finley out of the backfield. They sling it out to him. Able to make one miss, moving up the sideline. Boy, that looked like a late tackle out of bounds. No flag in the air. Pass completed to Cameron Finley. A gain of seven on the play. So there was a gain of seven on that play. Third down. Parsons trying to get everyone moving quickly. St. Louis going in motion. It's going to get four receivers to the quarterback's left, one to the right. Parsons dropping back, pressure coming. He rolls out. He's going to go for it himself. Makes one man miss, and Dag Nabbit, there's a flag in the backfield. Right in the area of holding. Parsons has enough for the first down. Let's see what the flag is about. Holding on the Pioneers. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it's a good thing that Parsons got the first down on that carry so they can just decline the penalty and make a fourth. All right, so the Pioneers dropped way back now. Ten yards from the original line, or from where the ball was. Parsons steps forward, has time, throws, has a man in the middle. Tannis has to turn. He's got the first down. And a oh. little bit more. So by the time I was able to show up with the ball, the defender covering Tannis had fallen over. I don't know if he ran into another player or if he just slipped up, but it left Tannis wide open. He was able to catch the ball, turn to his left shoulder, and was able to get enough of the first down. So even with that long play, Pioneers are able to get the first, keep the drive going. Parsons, play action, pressured, and down he goes. Huge loss. The clock did not go off in time in his head. So Parsons is sacked. His blind side is where he got hit. That's a 13-yard loss. Pioneer offense looks disjointed right now, discombobulated even. Going with a really compressed set. Parsons over the middle, has a man. Fumble if they're going to call that a catch. They're going to say it was incomplete, yeah. Ball got knocked away. I don't think we ever had possession of it. The officials agree. Caden Brown tried to reel it in, but it got immediately knocked out of his hands. He was not able to complete it, come down and make a football move, as the expression goes, so on. Second and 22, it brings up now third and 22. Tannis looks gassed out there. They could use him on this one if he could get free going along that left sideline. He's on the bottom of your screen. Defense is going to pump back on him. Parsons looking that way. Oh, goes over the middle. And that's completed for a first down. Boy, hit as he made the catch. James Farmer Cole James able to come up with that first down Cole. catch. Well done. First down reception from Adrian Parsons. First and 10, him and you at the 21 yard line. So Tannis looking at the sideline. Boy, I don't know if he's gassed or fighting injury. Something's not right with Tannis down there. But Parsons was able to get it to Farmer Cole. Now, he's looking. He's got Tannis in the end zone on the fade. Underthrown and incomplete. So incomplete to Tannis on first and ten. Second and ten coming up. Parsons has his play quickly to the line. Parsons showing a little urgency here for the Pioneer offense. Fakes the handoff. Over the middle and threw that into the waiting arms of the Raven defender. So 
That's a turnover on the Pioneers. There is a flag down, but I do believe this came after the interception. So the interception, I imagine, is going to stand. Parsons and his receiver not on the same page. Now we'll see what the call is from the official. All right, well, the Pioneers just got bailed out. 15-yard roughing the passer penalty. So that actually will negate the interception. That is Tyler Wilson called for that. So that keeps the ball with the Pioneers. First down, and they picked up 15 yards. So fortunate, fortunate for the Pioneers after that interception. They took the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, and now we get 15 yards from that. So this ball is going to be placed, I believe, around the 10-yard line now for the Pioneers. And they have first down. So they have, they do have the ball this 10 and a half. There is technically a, there is space to get a first down before the end zone, but only by a couple inches. Parsons throws it left into double coverage. Ball is tipped around. And they're going to say, they're going to say that was intercepted in the end zone. Do we have a replay of that? I, I got to see that replay. Let's go back there for a second child person. Then we have to get a, does he come up with this inbound? Okay, you'll see you get battered around. Boy, howdy. You know what? I can't say either way. I can't say if they're right or wrong. Too many people in the way. So the official, who's a lot closer than me, even though I have benefit of a slow motion replay, he saw it as an interception. I could not... I, Certainly on a review, you could not overturn it based on the evidence presented to us. Can't tell from our angle. There's another player in the way. Oh, we got one right there. Let's see that again. All right, here we go. Ball's in the air. Yep, toe's in. Toe's in. Now here's a long run. This is Gathright. He's just got one to beat. He's just going to absorb the contact and go out of bounds. But a long play for Benedictine. As Gathright was able to take it down the left sideline as we were watching the replay there. So able to come up with a big old chunk for Benedictine. We're going to see it one more time. All right, let's check out that interception one more time. That was a great camera work we had down here in the end zone. Look at this. It's like they're right there on you. Right there. Now watch. Catch. Toe. Yep, he had it. So that's a, that's an actually an excellent call by the official. Well done, sir. Because in real time, that was lightning fast. So here we go. A little carry up the middle. Knock down. Gain of one on the play on the first down carry. Witherspoon now trying to get trying to get himself a hundred yard game. Are we sure our stats are up to date? Are our stats updating? Six thirty four third quarter. Okay, no, they're not updated yet. Okay, that's why it seems off. It's about a minute and a half behind game time. Got it. Pioneers bringing the heat, and thankfully they were able to get Witherspoon, knock him down for a very minimal gain, getting one on the play. Pioneers were bringing the blitz, and credit to the defensive back for the Pioneers. He was watching. He was ready to either go after the running back or the quarterback, but he was right there to get either. So third and seven facing the Raven offense. Now, if you're watching your screen, look at the bottom of your screen. That's Gathright. He has been a huge threat today. Definitely most prominent in the passing game of Benedictine. Also, keep in mind that Kettle can tuck the ball and run himself. He has not done that much this half, but is certainly capable. He's going to drop back. Gets it to his running back in the backfield. Pioneer defense is there, but he spins free, and the Pioneers couldn't bring him down. They had him. That would have stopped the drive, possibly. 
But able to spin free was the receiver. And that brings up a first down for the Ravens. Yeah, we're not updating on, on here. So whatever, whatever we got to do on that, I don't know. Yeah, because it still shows 634, and they haven't updated the quarterback in a while. So our stat system is, it's cold. It doesn't want to play anymore. It, might, it probably is the Wi-Fi here. Now, Kettle's going to keep the ball, run himself, and he's just going to go out of bounds. He's able to come up with eight yards on that carry. Second and two coming up. Yeah, it's weird. This part's still running, but that's not. That's not. Hmm. All right, Kittle now has two receivers to his left, one to the right. Running back stays in there with him. And he's more than capable to run this himself. We'll see. Send a man in motion. They're going to spin, hand it off to the running back. He is drugged down right at the line. I think forward progress. Are they going to give him one? Looks like they're going to hold him for no gain on that play. Third down. Flores gets credited for that tackle. Third and two coming up. Jonathan Brown is coming to linebacker. Witherspoon back in the backfield for the Ravens. Now it's going to be a design quarterback rollout. He's looking, looking, has his tight end coming out. Now we've got a flag on the play. Touchdown, Benedictine. We're going to have to see if this stands. This is in the area of holding or, or ineligible downfield. Either way, don't celebrate yet. Holding on the offense. So this is going to come back. So on third and two, the 10-yard penalty will move him back to third and 12. Again, race the touchdown that just happened. Holding on the offense. Hmm. Still not updating. And once our stat system decides to wake back up, I will uh, update you on how things are going. Tell you right now, 2.40 remaining in the third quarter. 43-14, Benedictine. They are facing a third and 12. Man goes in motion. Quarterback dropping back, looking left. Now comes back right. Pressure comes, gets it away to Witherspoon. Witherspoon is hit. Not enough for the first down, but it could make for an interesting fourth down call as they get it up to about a fourth and four. So the field goal unit coming in for Benedictine. So Nick Ignolia with his first field goal attempt. He's hit many an extra point, but this is his first field goal attempt. Good snap. Good placement. The kick is up and looks like it's wide right. Indeed it is. That kick is no good. So the Pioneer offense will take over where that ball was missed from. And 2.15 remaining in the quarter. Pioneer ball after the missed, missed field goal. See, that ball was on the 18-yard line, so that was looking at something like a 27-yard kick, somewhere around there. And goes in motion for Parsons. Parsons still under center. He's going to hand it off. Let's see who this is. This is Caleb Bryant. Caleb Bryant into the game at running back. Comes up with his first carry of the afternoon. Gets about a yard on the play.
I got the officials ready to resume play, maybe. There we go. All right. They were holding that play up for some such reason. Parsons now, empty backfield. Blitz comes. Picked up by the offensive line. Parsons steps forward, though. Now he runs right into it. He's going to be knocked down, sacked on the play. Maybe a loss of one. Loss of one on the play. Going to bring a third and ten for the Pioneer offense. Pretty sure Parson knew that was coming. He was just trying to step and get a step up and get away. Avoided the big loss. Loses just one. Third and ten. Ravens defense picking up the pace here. The Pioneers have been pretty punchless. Now here's a throw over the middle. Has Tannis. That's enough for the first down. He is out racing everyone. Look at Tannis turn the edge. One to beat. Hurdles him and goes out of bounds. Three receivers. Or I'm sorry, receivers. Three defensive backs helplessly trying to keep up with Tannis. He was able to turn the corner on all three of them. The last defender is the one who could not come out of bounds. Now Tannis is down on the sideline. He's over in the Benedictine area, helped up by a Benedictine coach. And he's going to try and bring it across the field to get to his sideline. Heavily limping. Remember, Tannis has missed time this year with injury. So hopefully this is nothing too serious as he gets back on the field by maybe just a couple yards and then goes down to receive treatment from the trainers. Let's see here as Tannis lands. Let's see. I'm not sure if this is from the landing or just his overall effort in this game, but landing on that one foot. Oh, he kicked the helmet. Okay, well, that'll hurt your shin. I know that's right. Your shin, your foot, whatever makes contact with someone's helmet. That's not going to feel good. But Tannis is heading off the field under his own power. Keeps trying to run it out and has to take it down to a walk, but he's going to limp off. So it's first down for the Pioneers after that catch and run by Tannis. A minute remains in the third quarter. Pioneer in Raven territory. So Caleb Bryant remains in the backfield for the Pioneers. Menifee is out there as well. St. Louis, Farmer Cole. Now Parsons with it. Going to give it to Bryant. Bryant, boy, he got past initial contact, with his, which is good because they had him in the backfield. But he's able to get that back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Going to bring up second and ten. They, they had him about two yards deep. He was able to fight forward and just make that no gain. Bryant remains. Parsons and Bryant in the backfield. Everyone's lined up left. Fake it to Bryant. Throw it out to Farmer Cole real quick, but boy, two Ravens there. He's trying to get away. Now the third one's going to get him. And everyone getting a little testy down there. That's going to be a loss on the play, though, about five yards. That was a pass behind the line of scrimmage, and Cole, even with all his moves, could not create any space. Third down. I'd say about third and 14 coming up. And that's going to do it for the end of the third quarter. At the end of three, 43-14 is your score. The Ravens of Benedictine now, just 15 minutes away from closing this out. Pioneers just trying to make some positive gains here on offense. They've been pretty stalled out here in the second half of action. As let's see. Did both of their touchdowns come in the first quarter, or was it one and one in each quarter? Either which way. Yeah. And it was both first quarter? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, the Pioneers have been shut out for quite a while now, for two quarters straight. They're going to need to try and get something in the end zone. Just to make this more fun. Okay, we're ready to resume the game. Time to start the fourth quarter. Pioneers now with the wind at their back. Watch this. They're going to go for the end zone right now. Here they go. 
Ball on the 45-yard line. Parsons fakes the handoff. Looking, looking. Oh, man, hit as he throw. That ball is out. Recovered by Benedictine. Parsons took one heck of a hit on that. Never saw it coming. He was in his throwing motion, and he just got blown up. Ouch. So Gill gets the recovery. I was not sure who got the sack. Let's see if we can see it here on the replay. Watch this. Parsons never sees it. He's back. All right, I'm going to throw now. Glunk. Ouch. Oh, fooled the cameraman. That will happen. So I'm still not going to be able to see who. What's his number? What's his number? I can't see. Ah, the guy who did the sack in the first place. Ah, couldn't tell. Either way, it's fine. Credit to the defender of Benedictine. I would give you the number if I could see it. Even on the replay, couldn't see it. Kettle now is going to hand it off to his running back. He's going to be knocked down right around the line of scrimmage. Into the game is Rashawn Mills. So Mills getting a few carries. Gets the clock going for Benedictine. So one yard gain. Again, Benedictine should be in no hurry on this drive. Is it 87? Okay, thank you. Give credit where credit is due on that sack. Zach Bierman with the sack that caused the fumble. Got the ball back for Benedictine. They're going to run again. Left edge. Tries to cut it back inside. Meets Troy Hall. He's brought down. Mills on the carry. So they're going to give him four on that carry before Hall was able to bring him down. Third and four coming up for the Ravens offense. Kettle taking his time. And now it takes a snap, drops back. Quick pass outside, and he just overthrew his running back coming out of the backfield. Intended target was Rayshon Mills, but there was no way Mills was going to catch that pass. Too high, too hard. So fourth down coming up, and Benedictine's going to bring on their special teams unit. Oh, it was 97 on the fumble. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, now I got a third down. Okay. It was someone. It was a Raven. Raven sacked him. <laughs> I'm hearing numbers being thrown around everywhere up here in the booth. 43-14. They're Benedictine. Going to be looking for a little pooch. <laughs> Their special teams guy can't get his jacket off. And so they call a timeout. There was one second left on the play clock, and the last guy trying to get in for Benedictine couldn't get his warm-up jacket off. <laughs> uh, that was that was rough. So they'd use a timeout, and the the coach of Benedictine not thrilled with the special teams. Yeah, not thrilled. We got a special. Uh, we got a replay. What do we got? Oh, the guy trying to get his coat off. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's the little things. Top of your screen. Yeah, yeah, there he is running with his coat on. He couldn't get it pulled off of over his gloves, I'm sure. Anyway, you know, it's it's the little things in life that kind of got to make you chuckle, right? Okay, so, uh-oh. Trickeration coming out of the timeout. Here's the offense for Benedictine. So the punt unit does not come on after the timeout. I guess the coach decided special teams, if you're not going to have your jackets off and ready, you don't get to go in. So fourth and four for Benedictine. Ooh, trying to go for the hard count. From here, a delay game wouldn't hurt them at all. It would actually give them a little more space to work with on a common kick, but they are going to snap it. Quarterback drops back. This play is blown dead. And I believe this is going to be a false start on Benedictine. So trying to go in on fourth and four. Penalty called, and now the punt unit comes trotting back onto the field. Maybe that was the, uh, the idea the whole time. Bold strategy. We're going to play into the penalty. That's what we're going to do. Back into punt. <laughs> Back into punt. I definitely would say watch the watch the fake here because why not? 
Finley's back to return if this punt actually gets away. Good snap. And a little pooch kick. Going to end up being short. Pioneers just got to make sure they don't touch this. Ooh, it takes a great bounce. Ooh, fielded by the Pioneers. And that's all right. That was actually smart. Stopped it from rolling backwards any further. Ball's going to be down at the 15-yard line. So St. Louis actually just kind of reached out and grabbed it rather than let it roll further, fell forward. That was actually not a very dangerous play, so good heads-up play by St. Louis. Ball at the 15-yard line. Let's see if Parsons can get something going for this very stalled-out Pioneer offense. Again, two-plus quarters now without a touchdown or a score of any kind. They did have a field goal attempt blocked. Pioneer's going to be, well, Parsons is going to be looking into the sun. The receivers looking back will not be. St. Louis out wide. Oh, Parsons has Tannis and under threw him. Oh, Parsons is going to kick himself. Tannis just on a quick slant. He was around everyone and just underthrown. With his speed, that might have been a touchdown on that play. Imagine he could have outrun everyone. But again, he's also left the field injured at one point. He's been fighting injury all year. He's all alone down here now on the bottom of your screen. Parsons steps up. Flag is thrown. Parsons is dropped in the backfield. And a partridge and a pear tree. So a loss of two. Pioneers are acting like this is going to be on Benedictine, though. Personal foul hands to the face on Benedictine. So the Pioneers, fortunate, they're going to come up with 15 yards here on what has been a not a great start to this drive. You know, maybe this is the spark they need right here with 13-15 remaining in the ball game, trailing by a little bit, 43 to 14. Like I said, they got the Ravens right where they want them. Right where they want them. Look out now. Parsons is going to hand this off. No, play action pass to the sideline. Great catch, but was he in bounds? The officials say no. It was a wonderful catch at the top of your screen, but just a little out of bounds. So an incomplete pass. Second and 10 coming up for the Pioneers. Brown not able to. Reel it in. Parsons quickly trying to get the offense going. They're going to hand it off. Good run up the middle. This Bryant with the carry. Did he get enough? Indeed he did. Enough for the first down. Good run by Bryant. Ball at the 40-yard line. Tannis comes back into the game. Tannis and St. Louis at the bottom of your screen. Caden Brown up there at the top. They're going to give it to Brian again. This time, no room up the middle. He's going to be wrestled down. Gain a two if they're real lucky. They give him two. Second and eight. Parsons again trying to Speed this offense up a little bit. Now we're going to be looking empty backfield. Parsons throws over the middle, has Tannis. Tannis first down, he fumbled the ball. That's definitely going to be a fumble. No, they're going to call that an incomplete. I am, I'm surprised they're calling this incomplete. Do we have a replay of that one? I'd like to see this again. Let's see if he catches it, takes two steps, makes a football move, any of that good stuff that they talk about on the big broadcast. One, two, turn. Okay, incomplete. We're going to call that an incomplete pass. That's going to bring up third and eight, everybody. Parsons now takes a snap, drops back all by himself. Little screen over the middle. Oh, and Bryant just got tripped up. So, good defense, able to trip him up there. He would have had the first down if not tripped up because there was no one else around. Going to bring up fourth and seven. Offense is remaining on the field. Might as well. Fourth down, seven yards for 
Again, fourth and seven. Here we go. Pioneers got to have it. Got to get right to midfield. Parsons looking right. Comes back left. Tons of time. Throws. He's got a man. Has him at the 30-yard line. Completed pass. First down, Pioneers. Adrian Parsons pass complete to Caden Brown. So Caden Brown comes up with the first down completion. Caden Defender was draped all over him, but Brown was able to come up with it. First down, Pioneers. Again, Parsons trying to move the offense right along. Parsons, ooh, low snap, able to handle it. Blitz coming, gets it away, takes a hit, has a man wide open. That is St. Louis, and St. Louis is going to be brought down close to the 10-yard line, maybe around the 12th or 11. So a 16-yard gain by the Pioneers. That's first down for the Pioneers. Again, Parsons had a man bearing down on him, but he was able to get rid of the ball, took the hit, comes up with a first down. Pioneers, best offensive drive of the half. St. Louis goes in motion. Parsons steps forward to redirect him. Parsons takes it a little stretch play right. Gives it to Brown. Bryant, I'm sorry. Bryant tries to get the corner. He's going to be able to fall forward and come up with some positive yardage on this play. And they gave him five. So five on the first down carry for Bryant. Pioneers looking to their sideline for the play. Now they've got it. Some of them have it. The wide receiver is out wide to the quarterback's left. Look a little lost. There we go. Now we're good. Man in motion. That's St. Louis heading down, down the formation. Trying to zip across the middle of the field. Parsons, he's going to step forward. He's got some space. Can he make it in? Indeed he does. Touchdown, Pioneers. Adrian Parsons with the keeper. Wasn't designed that way, but he's able to step forward and actually gets wrestled into the end zone by the Ravens defender. So thankfully, the Pioneers able to break this little two-quarter shutout streak. And they're able to put a touchdown on the board. Special teams on the field looking to knock through this extra point attempt. And there we go. Good placement. Kick is up, and the kick is good. The kick is good. So the Pioneers are able to put something on the board here in the late stages of the ball game. There's 9.53 remaining in the fourth quarter. 43-21 is the score. Benedictine Ravens on top of the American Nazarene University Pioneers. So our time this season is drawing to a close as we're almost done. Like I said, no more football until August. But, of course, on campus and everything else, volleyball, they play tonight. Get out to the Cook Center. Go watch a volleyball team play. Basketball is just getting underway. They haven't even gotten to the good part of the season yet. So basketball is going. Make sure you go and check them out. Never a dull moment on campus at MNU. Adrian Parsons, since he's coming in this half, he's 11 for 17, 162 yards. So that's not too bad for not even a quarter and a half of work. Did have the one interception. He's been sacked three times. No touchdowns yet through the air, but he does have one now on the ground. Kick on the way for the Pioneers. High kick fielded around the 12 yard line. No, I'm sorry, the 16 yard line. 17, somewhere in there. Good return for Benedictine. Now they're just going to run that out of bounds. Todd with the return. And doesn't try anything crazy. Just keeps going forward until the special teams got there, and then he goes out of bounds. Good starting field position for this Ravens drive. Garrett Kettle back into the game. Still in the backfield, running the show for the Ravens. Kettle now has never once been under center, so still back in the shotgun, five yards behind his center. 
You're going to get it. Just going to turn around, hand it off to his back. Witherspoon. Witherspoon tripped up by the defensive end and brought down. He saw a lot of green in front of him. Just couldn't get past the line of scrimmage there. With that, Witherspoon should be over 100 yards for the day. Second and six coming up for this Raven offense. We'll see how much they decide to put it in the air as they're just trying to get this game ticked down. Kettle going with the hard count, trying to get the defense to jump off sides. And now Kettle with the keeper, and he's got the first down and a lot more deep into Pioneer territory. Ravens all looking at the sideline for their play. Again, they, they've they run since the first of this game a very slow tempo offense. They've never been in much of a hurry keeping that going. Again, no point in hurrying up now. Coming in for the Pioneers, Tremont Pledger. Just kind of ran on here late, making sure he gets his assignment right. Kettle takes a snap, drops back, throws over the middle, has his tight end. Tight end's going to be knocked down about a yard short of the first down marker. Pass was completed to Tanner Zimmerman, freshman tight end. Oh, he's out of Olathe, Kansas, from Olathe West. It's a local kid. Down to 10 on the play clock. Under eight minutes in the game now. Snapped with one second left. Dropping back, looking left, throws left, going for the end zone. And this was not in, intercepted, but knocked away. Good defense there by Mike Harrison. Mike Harrison had his head turned, had it played perfectly. And then there might have been a chance that he could come up with that catch, but instead just takes the intercept, or not the interception, the incomplete. Gets it knocked to the ground. So third and three from the 32-yard line coming up for the Raven offense. They're having a little personnel issues themselves. Their receiver racing to get in formation. Definitely watch the design quarterback keeper on this one. Pioneers are going to send the heat. They run the option. Can they get outside? Yes, they do. And I believe this is Witherspoon. Indeed it is. He has enough for the first down. It was a heck of a time to pull out the option play. The Pioneers were bringing it, trying to knock him down in the backfield. Quarterback Kettle wisely pitches it out. There was no one there. First down, Witherspoon. You can watch a replay here from our sideline cam coming right at you into your living rooms. Now, definitely, definitely looking to spread this out. Are they actually going to pass this? Nope. Going to be a run play. And boy, taken down for a loss. Well done by the Pioneer defense. All over that play was LaMarcus McDonald. He was having none of that. So McDonald, good heads up play. Saw the play developing to the outside. Just exploded into the backfield to take the running back down. Big loss on the play. Second and 15 coming up. Six and a half remaining in the game. Benedictine still just trying to chew up the clock. Too bad I can't relate to the sideline and stuff I hear in the booth, but that would be bad. Kettle throws right side, too tall for his tight end. Incomplete pass. Stops the clock with 6.16 remaining. Brings up third and 15. Pioneers getting some fresh bodies in here for this third and 15. Big substitution on the defensive side. 
See what Benedictine decides to do. If they're going to keep this on the ground or try and get it through the air. Buteau's had a good game. He's on the bottom of your screen. I'm assuming Gathered at the top. Pioneer's looking like they're going to bring the blitz. Indeed they do. They couldn't get through. Able to hit his tight end who bobbled it around, and now it's actually incomplete. Their tight end actually never had a hand on it. Well, he never had control of it, had any hand on it, and that was it. So fourth down coming up, fourth and 14. Benedictine is not taking their offense off the field as of yet. Kettle is staying right there in the huddle. Well, their version of a huddle. Looking like they're going to go for it here on 4th and 14. 4th and 15, sorry. From the 29-yard line, it's 4th down and 4. What? No, 4th and 15. 4th and 15. All right, here we go. 4th and 15 coming up. Ravens. There we go. All right, he wanted the play clock reset. Play clock is reset. Pioneers got to watch. Don't jump. Could just be a hard count. You never know. All right, nope. They snap it. Dropping back. Going for it all in the end zone. Out of the reach of absolutely everybody. Turnover on downs. So good job by the Pioneer defense. They were trying to pick on Anthony Sal over there, but he had his, his receiver well covered. That ball uncatchable by anyone on this field. So a turnover on downs, the Pioneer offense will take over. It'd be nice if they could make this game a little closer. Yeah, a little closer here. It's never over until there's all zeros on the clock. Parsons and Cherry in the backfield for the Pioneers. Tannis, bottom of your screen, near side. Two lined up at the top, man in motion. And they're going to pitch it to him right off the snap. I don't know what came flying out of his pocket, but that was interesting. Uh, James Farmer Cole was able to take that. And that's technically a pass, even if it's one of those little shovel deals right after the snap. And had stuff flying out of his pocket as he ran around. I bet those are hand warmers. All that money, those are hand warmers when flying out of his pockets. <laughs> All right, Cherry in motion, empty backfield for Parsons. Parsons dropping back, looking right. Tannis fighting, fighting, fighting. And no call. I bet that's going to be ruled as uncatchable. Because there was a lot of contact between Tannis and the defensive back. Mutual amounts of contact, so I think that's a good no call right there. See, look at that stuff all flying out. That's either money on the field or hand warmers. Now Parsons' quick throw has his man, but only about a one-yard gain as the receiver falls to the turf. Caden Brown with the completion. No, I'm sorry, that was Menifee. Robert Menifee with the completion, but again, he fell to catch it. Only a gain of one. Going to bring up third and nine as I bump my microphone. Take that. So Parsons and Cherry back there. Three to the right of the quarterback. They fake it to Cherry. Parsons looking, had time. Throws it to the sideline, though. And I'm not sure what that was. That was kind of a, a lame duck coming out of there. Maybe it was tipped by someone on the line. Parsons stretching it out like he's got, I don't know, he might have either taken a hit or got some back tightness. He keeps trying to twist and stretch something out over there. So fourth and nine, the offense stays on the field. We got it figured out now. I'd watch Tannis on the slant to the inside here. She's had great success with that. Cherry empties the backfield. Stunt run by the defense. There's the slant. No flag. He was getting tackled before the ball got there. Do we have a replay? All right, watch this replay. See if I'm right or wrong. Ball, ball. Oh, yeah, that guy was already in the act of catching him before the ball got there. That's a missed one by the officials. You guys know me well enough. I, you know, just. If, if it's not a if it's not a flag, I'll say it's not a flag. But that one now is a flag. 
If I think something's incomplete and the replay shows me it's complete, you know, hey, I'll say it was complete. But this, yo, know, that's perfect. Oh, no, come on, camera, move over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was already tackling him down. <laughs> right, even even the, the most staunch Ravens homer has to admit that was a little questionable. But anyway, long story short, here's a run to the right side by the Ravens. Pioneer is not able to... Get him out of bounds. Now we got a little scrum in the middle of the field. No big deal. They all walk away from that one. 16-yard gain on the first down carry. Yeah, show that carry by Overstreet. So Derek Overstreet with a good 16-yard carry on first down. Low snap. Taken out, and there is a new quarterback in the game now, just to make everybody aware. Luke Leskowski has checked in now at quarterback for the Ravens. It's going to close the book on Kettle. Kettle's day, 16 for 26, four touchdowns and an interception, 239 yards through the air. And that'll do it for Kettle's day. Also getting the distinct impression that Witherspoon has finished. He finishes with 15 attempts, 108 yards. Long as being a 25-yard carry, so definitely did well on the ground for the Ravens. Now Laskowski going for the hard count, again taking time off the clock. They snap it with five left. They run the option, pitches it out to his running back, and boy, he gets lit up. And Troy Hall with the knockdown of the running back, loss of one. The hit was more spectacular than the loss on the play, but well done by Troy Hall. 3.15 remaining in the game, third and 11, facing the Raven offense. Again, their backup quarterback, Luke Laskowski. Man in motion. Laskowski's going to drop back and throw. Ooh, geez, Louise. Incomplete pass, and the intended receiver gets lit up for his efforts. No flag on the play. Now some pushing and shoving going on. It was definitely a strong hit, but there's no flag. It was not an illegal hit. It's just end-of-game frustrations. Okay. Fruity language up here. Fruity language. We apologize for the fruity language, folks. Hopefully my microphone's not catching any of that. Benedictine coach is a little foul mouth. Jeez. All right, so watch your screen right here. Here's the hit. Yeah, that's, that's solid. That's a solid hit. So the officials are still going to talk things over. And there we go. Okay, so there's still, after conferring, no flag on the play. Fourth down, fourth and 11 coming up. And we'll see who heads out onto the field. I mean, this could be a long field goal attempt. Ah, you guys did hear that. Sorry, everybody. Uh, again, I cannot control the coach's language up here. But I do apologize. That was, that was rather egregious, rather egregious. Okay, so it looks like going forward on 4th and 11 is the offense for Benedictine. They're going to drop back. Throwing over the middle. Has a man, and this should be enough to move the chains. It keeps the drive alive for Benedictine. This went to Zimmerman, the tight end. Knocking, knocking over my trash here. 
So again, no no hustle being shown by the Raymond offense as they're just trying to get this down. Now 10 seconds on the play clock. 2.15 remaining in the ball game. Pioneers looking like they're going to bring the blitz. Instead, they throw it out wide. And now shoved out of bounds. As this was a play along the sideline. Pass was complete to Pete. Ooh, Kadena or Sedina, one of the two. Hey, I get that those words are said in practice in a game, but we're broadcasting. We can get in trouble for that. Come on now. Trust me, I've heard worse from my 16-year-old. All right, play a stop. The officials have stopped this for something or another. There we go. Now we're ready to go. I still love the trail of hand warmers on the field. Exactly, and YouTube will ban us, which they've done before. We've already gotten in trouble with YouTube. Here's a good stop. There's a hit after the play, so we're going to have yet more extracurricular activities. And we'll just be thrilled to get this all down to zeros. And there's two flags in on the play after conferring by the officials. See who's going to get this. I imagine offsetting. Everybody's guilty. We hit the quarterback, is that what he said? Oh, yeah, 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a late hit by their quarterback. Hey, look at that. He wants to make a name for himself there. Official still conferring. It's a zebra convention. I haven't said that one all year, so I busted it out in the last game. Still waiting for the lead official to come up with something. Nope, they're going to keep talking again. Every time some leave, more come in. All right, all the laundry is off the field. And there we go. This is going to be on Benedictine. Because it was their quarterback who was in on a very late hit, so that's where the personal foul is going to be called. So first and goal from the 24. Now playing quarterback for Benedictine, Jackson Oh, so that's interesting. They pulled Luke Laskowski. He's done. In is Jackson Dooley, now a quarterback. Yeah, I see. They're throwing the hand warmers off. <laughs> Get him out of the way. Yeah, this is just going to be a kneel down. I don't imagine the Pioneers are going to use a timeout on any of this. That guy sounds like a game show host down there, doesn't he? <laughs> Glad it's not just me. All right, so let's see. So the final for the Pioneers here, final stats, is this game is just a couple kneel downs away. Blake Ekins was 17 for 28, had 228 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Parsons, who spelled him in the second half, 13 for 22. No touchdowns, one interception, 179 yards. On the ground, Finley led the way with 10 attempts for 61 yards. Cherry, seven attempts, 34 yards. Bryant, five attempts, 14 yards. Parsons, four runs for 12 yards. And then Atkins had five carries for 10 yards. Tannis led the way for the Pioneers, eight receptions, 156 yards and two touchdowns. So Tannis, of course, had himself a great game. Williams, six receptions for 78 yards. St. Louis, four receptions for 66 yards. Farmer Cole, three receptions, 37 yards. Let's see, Brown, a reception for 27. Masunas, a reception for 11. Cherry, a reception for nine. 
And then Bryant and Menifee both were with receptions themselves. So Pioneers moved the ball around to a lot of different people today. So, hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Pioneers had 28 first downs in the game. Benedictine had 27. Rush attempts, 32 for the Pioneers for 67 yards, 39 for Benedictine for 247. Through the air, Pioneers and ultimately had 407 yards and 261 for the Ravens. And that's where we're going to be. So that is the end of the season. The Pioneers finished 7 and 4. And Benedictine Ravens moved to 10 and 1 on the season. So that's going to do it from Olathe, Kansas. Everyone have a great off season. We will be back in August when the weather is a little warmer. And we'll be playing some uh, late summer football. So everyone have a great rest of your year. Happy holidays from all of us here at the Pioneer Sports Network. And we'll see you next year.